Hey everybody, welcome to a surprise stream of Questing Chaos Coffee and Painting. We're painting today, um, not so to much fanfare because you guys didn't know we were going to do this, but we got a lot of work to get done and we thought, why not put it on stream? Also joined by legendary Warhammer painter Chainsword Charlie, otherwise known as Chris Bray. Where's my camera? Yeah, uh, no, right there, <laughs> straight ahead. Right. <laughs> Is this amateur hour? Um, Chris helps me paint my minis, which I'll, I'll show later, but he's also going to help Quest and Chaos uh, paint our scenes for the upcoming RPG Carbon 2185 that we plan on running September uh, 8th, so join us then. Um, and he's also going to give us some tips because I am basically a painting novice, and I'm like, if I'm new to this and I'm interested and I want to do it, there's probably somebody watching who wants to do it as well. Uh, so again, Urban Mask, Chainsword Charlie, and Thomas doesn't have a cool handle, so we're just going to call him Thomas. But Thomas runs this joint. You guys should all be familiar. Thomas A. Tom Cook, it is the best handle. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to all watching. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for sitting in. Hef, you're a gangster. Right. <laughs> um, so I, you know, wanted to, to paint. I got some minis from uh, Hero Forge. And it's like, ah, oh, they're grayscale, they're black scale. I don't know what to do with these, but I needed some minis for the carbon RPG. And I was like, who do I know that does this? And Chris, <laughs> obviously, was the first one who came to mind. So kind of talking through painting and helping, having him help me paint and understand the prime, the base, the wash, and what right. all these different things do. Yep. Um, I thought, hey, I'm listening. Why not? Why not come on stream and like help us? do this. Uh, so he was gracious, gracious enough on a Saturday to come on down. Uh, so thank you for joining. I don't know where we're going to start. We got a bunch of things primed and base coated and detail ready. Um, so we're going to be working on different things at different parts of the table. We got some pretty cool paints to show you. But yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm just going to be painting away here. I'm try, <laughs> I'll try to engage you guys, but I'm basically going to be looking down doing, doing a little bit of this. So what? Uh, so you've you've done a couple of these, right? Already these 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 terrain pieces, yes, um, which are for the the carbon thing. Yes. So I did. Um, well, we started all of them. Mm. Everything here, um, we primed at least and just got it. Um, like what, what? The it's printed with like a resin or plastic, right? A PLA. Okay. So yeah. these are the three D printed ones here, like um, these all these guys. This is so we we primed all these either this black or light gray color, and then we're just working on them from there. Um, the thing with terrain is that like sometimes there's so much of it, as you know, and as a, as I can see in here, there's so much that like, <laughs> that um, but not enough at the same time. Right, it's like ah, like you can only uh, at least at first like take it to a certain level of detail, and then if you want to like exceed that um, or get to that point, like that's you can do that. But there's a difference between painting one like highly detailed character mini, especially if it's like the one that represents you in the game, whatever game you're playing or something. Yeah. Um, or like, you know, however many walls we have here. Um, right. So like what's an effective way to paint them quickly versus like there's like some really highly detailed techniques you can do with character models and stuff too that we can talk about today too. But I mean, I've been, I worked on some of these. This is, this is one example of the wall we did. And I mean, this was primed dry brushed and everything, I don't know, like just this one piece, like we primed and everything, that took maybe less than an hour, and then everything else I did with it, both sides, which are a little different, um, maybe another 30 minutes or so. Like not a lot of time, but again, this is just one piece. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, how how far do you want to take them? <laughs> this is about as how far as I would go personally if I was like setting up my own game. Yeah, game. so the difference that I was, we were talking about the other day was that like at Warhammer you have a minimum barrier for entry before you can use the pieces. It depends. Whereas in D and D, like I could use rock tokens could, and, yeah, and yeah. get away with it. There's you could no, be, you could have nothing. Yeah, right. Basically, you could just be sitting around talking. Mind, about yeah, it. yeah. So the thing with like at least the way I because with Warhammer, where I, I that's where I'm coming from. I've played D and D twice maybe recently yeah. because Warren has come in and been like you like. You know, I have these models. Let's let's play a couple rounds of this new like module that's come out. I'm like, that's that's cool. I've seen it on Stranger Things. I don't know anything about D and D. I kind of want to like. I'd love to try it, but I need someone to guide me, right? Yeah. I need a I need a DM who like understands me 
luckily that wasn't me yeah right <laughs> um but for 40k it's different because for, it, like all the people are different some people come to games and it's it's unpainted gray models and then other people like would never consider doing such a thing yeah um i'm probably somewhere <laughs> yes. in the middle it depends who my who i'm playing with Right. Um, like I have, I have some guys that I'll set up games with where we're experimenting with new units and stuff that they may not be fully finished. Totally acceptable. I like to have at least a few colors on if I'm gonna like play them in a game. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, but for me, like, ideally, my stuff is at a like I try and paint to a standard where like I feel good about like the models I've made. This is like a typical my tabletop standard. It's like something like this marine or these. Now demons. you're showing off. <laughs> well, I'm just letting you know where I'm coming from. No, for and sure. I've also been doing this for much longer. I mean, I, I started when I was in, like, when I was a kid with my dad. He, he would love, like, scale models, like World War II planes and stuff, right? Yeah. He'd, like, put those together. And then um, from there, I don't know, Warhammer showed up at some point, and I was doing stuff up until I, basically I, like, hit high school and, like, there's all kinds of hobbies that just like fade away. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But this was one that like came back around after 15 years of off time. Um, I've always been interested in painting and doing stuff. Yeah. <laughs> you just need to tell so, uh, shout out Hefner. Thank you for 500 bits. Um, I don't know what, there's no inspiration here, so it'll probably carry over to either Gloomhaven <laughs> or Natural One. But thank you so much. Hefner is a super cool he's a mod but he's also like one of the best members of our community oh awesome super yeah. Yeah, I, uh, and Bo had the opportunity to meet him recently in Vegas of all places oh that's great I won't ask what happened but you know <laughs> still super chill guy and if you know whatever that last donation was you because you are insane uh, you triggered a, some sort of ramen uh, <laughs> ramen monster <laughs> emote <laughs> But <laughs> that's funny. Um, awesome. So yeah, like it's for me like the level that you like get to, it's it's different. But like I I do it for my own just like I I wanna create stuff that I enjoy seeing around or using in the game. And I know it's different for D and D where it's like you can play without any models. Yeah. Whereas like Warhammer, people see my models and they're like, wait a minute, there's a game associated with this? Yeah. I thought you were just doing this for kicks. Well the Which I, I would. The to be honest. It, it's kind of an etiquette thing at that point too with Warhammer, right? Like if you show up with extremely painted models and someone shows up with like a grayscale like army, you, you kind of even want to play with that person. You're like, dude, get take a walk. It depends. Like, get out of here. It's totally situational but I mean, you're not wrong. And and it takes you out of the immersive yeah, atmosphere. Like ideally, what you're doing is like you're trying to create a very cinematic thematic like series of events or well, like the game is supposed to be, yeah, it's supposed to be immersive. And you know, the the more well painted the terrain and the models are, like it's just the easier it is to to fall into. But like obviously, both games are require an act of imagination. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Either one. Having these figurines are definitely a bonus. Yeah. What I'm doing right now is uh, so we've got a bunch of pieces, and the progression that I understand the units to come in is you got the basic piece, then you need to prime it, then you need to put a base coat on it. Those could be the same color scheme, and then you go into either uh, your paint standard of whatever you're going to plan to have the final color or scheme or wash it or dry brush it. Yeah. I go from prime to base to dry brush because that's the most gratifying for a rookie <laughs> because that's yeah. when the features start to pop off. I'm like, oh, I'm doing something. Yep. You know? Yep. So that's that's what I'm going to be doing here today while the experts take on a little bit higher uh, higher end role. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a really good place to start, actually. And I mean, like, the, the major... Um, oh, is he still donating? Yeah. Ingvar Chaos. A Amy, Amy's here, so they have donated. Sorry. Amy's uh, our producer extraordinaire and wife. <laughs> Best wife ever. Nice. Um, but yeah, like the goal for, for a lot of painters or modelers is just to achieve a high level of contrast. So you want your like the recesses and your dark points to be as dark as possible. Yep. And you want your highlights to be like as as bright as possible, um, but also have them 
you know, mix in together or like live next to each other. So it doesn't seem totally crazy. But the yeah, go ahead. I just have a question. Like, if you were doing a like a, a like a wash step. Yep. Is that so? Do you do like like on a mini? Are you doing base coat everywhere, then wash, then then dry brush? Uh, highlight dry commonly, brush. Commonly, sure. Yeah. Okay. That that could be exactly how you do it. Okay. Um, I, I'll do washes at different stages on different parts. Um, but yeah, the the wash step is also a very gratifying stage because it, it's also like instant gratification. Yeah. Like, uh, as soon as it's dry afterwards, like the model instantly looks better. So I, I love to do washes because it's like, it's a feel good stage and it's also easy to paint on because it so feels thin. like I'm cheating when I use a wash <laughs> because it like, it goes into the places I'm too scared to poke my brush into. Exactly. It just like flood naturally and start to shade. I have a, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I apparently don't know how to use washes because they either they're very thin. Don't do anything. <laughs> um, or do too much to everything. So I've it's never either too thin or too thick. Just I've trying never to find used that. The, right. Yeah. The Bam. wash colors that I use is just black. I that's mean, it. That's yeah, it. that one's good. Did I? I meant to. Yeah, I did. So, so what, what color are you using to highlight or to dry brush these guys? Um, Wraithbone, which is kind of like a smoky white. Um, I it's guess an white. it's an off white. An if you bone here. show them, oh, this one that you already made right there. That's that's a good example of the primed and dry brush, right? This is dry brush with a metallic yeah. color. It's also um, technically a failed print. Look at that. That looks good. Is it? That it it died on the top, you know. But oh, uh, I guess yeah. it kind of, you know, maybe it works. I think it's cool. I, it works for me. And this was done. This was like five minutes. Of work, yeah. right? So we did we did a metal dry brush, and then we did a a black wash on it, or shade. I those are I use those words interchangeably, and then we did like a like a light gray dry brush just on the edges here. Um, but this was like super easy, and I would be fine with this as like a starter point for terrain, right? Yeah. Like I would kind of this would be like the first level that I'd be happy with, and then I would just ask myself, like, do I want to add any further detail on this? Um, but what do you, um, Thomas, what do you use for for your washes? Do you have... Um, so it's like a just... Like thin paint like that? Uh, really cheap paint and water. So it's just really thin? Yeah. Okay. Um, I just bought some actual wash, but it's, a, it's actually a dip. Oh, wash. yeah. Sure. So yep. I'll use that on some minis, but... Um, I tried painting that on. It didn't work very well. Yeah, I so, but that's so that's just a quick dry brush, one side or the other, right? That's like yeah, thirty seconds. Yep. So it's like you can see. So this is without it, right? This is just like straight up with yeah. just primer, and then this is what you did in the last thirty seconds. Yeah, that's what's up. Yeah, right. That's that's like that's a scene. You're it's starting. Done. Yeah. So like. I would get everything to like something like this point, like get them all like that, and yeah. I feel like you could start using stuff. And then it's like, how far do you want to take it? Right. And it's like, do you want to add in like individual details or like additional colors or metallics, like this gold or something? And like there's other metallics on here. Do you want to add in like rust or dirt mm -hmm. or something, right? Yeah. Like how far do you want to go? Right. And yeah. Warren, you were saying like you might want to double side these, yeah. have one be like an interior and then uh, the other side be yeah, the exterior. Yeah, so gotcha. what I was thinking, thanks for the shout outs in the chat. Um, minis might be coming. Soon. Oh, Lord Eichhorst. Uh, He's one of my followers on Instagram. Oh, right on, nice. Lord Eichhorst. Really, nice to really good converter and um, builder of models. Sweet. Yeah, mm. that's cool. Yep. Welcome to the chaos. So, what I was thinking, if you look closely at these, one side is like neon, silver. I was just screwing around with how <laughs> these turbo dork paints would look over a black base. Um, and those are, those are really fun. You, you, Feel free to use some. They're Chris won those at a competition, and he gifted those to me, and I've just been like, oh, what does this do? Man? Nice. But uh, on one side, I want to do one color scheme, and the other side, another one, so that we could use these, uh, be like, okay, now we're indoors, now we're outside. Yeah. Like, yeah which it's, is a pretty cool idea. I, I, I think that's the best way to do it. I don't know. It gives you some flexibility, yeah, yeah. for sure. Um, do you like, have... Like, oh, yeah. This is a great starting point, though, Thomas. Like, and what... what what, what gray do you have? Uh, actually, this is bone. Oh yeah, bone white. So that's like similar to what Warren was doing. Yeah. This, so this is normally used as a base coat. This like off-white bone color. Um, 
but I feel that like when you're dry brushing stuff, you can use anything. Yeah. Um, but for washes, maybe you would just try some different paint. Um, because if, if something's too thin like that, it may just not have like the saturation levels you're looking for. Right. So like it may be thin enough, but it's not just, it's just not doing its job fully. Yeah. Like it's thin enough that it like appears like a wash, but it just, right. it just doesn't have the staying power. Yeah. Ish. And, and the color is not dense enough that it's like making a, it's not making anything pop. Um, gotcha. Yeah. So, you know, a lot of the stuff too, it's like, I've been going because there's so much terrain. Yeah. You know, I don't necessarily want to go and buy these constantly. Right. <laughs> so, you know, I went to join fabrics and got like a giant jar of black. So what you would, so that's been my base painting. Everything is just, you know, like a really cheap acrylic paint. So what, if you want to keep it cheap, um, buy, uh, like an artist medium, which is clear. But yeah. it's like the body of the paint without any pigment oh, in it. Okay. And then mix that instead of water. And that'll thin it down. Gotcha. But it'll it'll maintain the actual color better than just water. It actually like holds the paint in a different way. Um, pro tip. <laughs> um, I'm like, is this? Uh, I feel like I'm at a restaurant and we're eating, and you're waiting for your food to come out. D dig in, man. Like we're not. Yeah. Oh God. Okay. <laughs> so come on, dude. Put put your money where your mouth is. I know. I guess I'll help you guys do this. <laughs> Um, but if we want to, if you guys are doing dry brushing, maybe I'll do, I'll do, um, some shade work. So give me something that could use like a black or brown wash on it. Maybe one of these guys. These guys, definitely. Something that could use some contrast. Yeah, this one for sure. This one. I like the speckled one because, uh, all right, now I guess it's time to get into, uh, the story of carbon and why the yeah. name of it. Yeah, what uh, are we, actually, what are we doing, right? Yeah, so. Because mo most people don't know that we were doing another little mini series yeah we're um, playing a smaller module oh, a small module from a large kickstarter by the name of carbon 2185 and it is basically cyberpunk and it takes place in the year 2185 um in a bunch of different metropolitan locations tokyo london uh la but our module will be in San Francisco, the Bay Area, basically the place where we're at right now. And it makes a bunch of kind of bold predictions about the future here that I just want to get your thoughts on when we get like into uh, yeah. this thing. Uh, um, Thomas is Thomas got some unique <laughs> political views, but I feel like this 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 my, they consulted him when they when they went ahead on my, this. my political party is troll. <laughs> so. Um, Officially registered. Yeah. So whichever whichever party you are, I am prob I am the opposite at that moment. <laughs> it uh, the guy. Well, the team that made it is are based out of um, London, and I'm like, okay, yeah, I see why they would think this from that distance, um, and some uh, some choices that they make in terms of like how the city is divided and where the affluent live. I'm like, oh, I can kind of see that maybe. But um, they they make predictions on the future in terms of Elon Musk uh, basically colonizing Mars successfully and now we've got a, a back and forth sort of trade route between us and Mars. They make some predictions about okay. uh, rising tide and sea level, basically San Francisco. Are we a peninsula or an islip? What is like that little thing? What it's are we? It's a peninsula. It's a peninsula? Right? Yeah, I think so. The entire peninsula has this big sea water level rises yeah. in San Francisco and basically like there is no beach. Everywhere on the outer sunset down to Daly City has got this big ugly obscure wall blocking gotcha. the water from intruding in. Um, a sea wall. A will. sea wall, yeah. Uh, the affluent live in District 2, which is basically South San Francisco, and they've got the best view of the dilapidated skyline. Um, I don't, personally, I don't nice. think that, uh, well, before I get into the lore of it, um, rusted over modules outside of San Francisco, the digital divide is very real in this world. Um, it's extremely high-tech, futuristic, people have augmentations, there's synths and droids walking around, you're born with a Neuralink augmentation, which is a private company selling you adverts, but also allowing you to have basically text message in your mind. Um, outside of these major cities is basically yeah. fallout. Like, it's just <laughs> a wasteland if you're not in one of these major metropolitan cities. Nice. So uh, Amy and I are playing twins, or at least we say we're twins. Um, we'll find out as the game oh, progresses. Game. That's a cool idea. Uh, He's actually 
I have a character. I've been I've been uh, play testing oh, what nice. you guys are gonna run nice. through with yeah, him. In the hamster. <laughs> so we are we're corporate kids, which means that we have been um, basically adopted by a corporation. Yeah. Um, you know, and put to work. However, that we're promising. We are <laughs> we are old now. I think we're in our fifties. Our characters are in, our, in their fifties, and. And I believe that's going to be the jumping off port point to getting out of the corporate. Uh, but we'll see. I don't, I don't know exactly. But. No longer a kid. Yeah, exactly. Right. Main, with a corporate outlasted. Yeah, individual. you're useful. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, I'm playing a, a doctor, a cyber surgeon, in fact. Uh, basically the cleric of the group. So I get, <laughs> I get bonuses to heals. Um, and at level two, I can uh, heal and do surgery on synths, on robots and stuff. So that is pretty rad. Do you remember what your vice was? I don't. Uh, those, uh, are, those are interesting. I don't. That's a good part of the character <laughs> setup, actually. They have some good ones. And mine when they was... rolled for their characters, no one was addicted to anything. Oh, <laughs> I, when we played, like I was snorting. I was, I was on crush like it was my job. No, but isn't somebody addicted to selling drugs? Aaron. So <laughs> That's hilarious. One of our... Uh, our fourth player is an android, and he is... Uh, basically trying to get people to try what essentially <laughs> boils down to snow crash right <laughs> any any uh, human made drug is BS to him and he's like you gotta try this electronic drug like it's it's the new thing. Oh, okay so he's like you try to work your vice in whenever you can yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah I grew up with some guys like that <laughs> uh, <laughs> Chris's vice was just... No, it was great. I love it. It's perfect. It's, I didn't ask for any of this. <laughs> I didn't ask for this. <laughs> this is that, that reluctant dude. Dropping that like, at every point he got. God damn it, I didn't ask for this. Nice. <laughs> it's just... It's uh, Danny Glover. Like, yep. 24-7. Yeah, I'm, too, I'm old too, old for this shit. too old for this. Man, remember when he said that? He was really young. Yeah, <laughs> he's still at it. It's still yeah. in like big topical stuff. Sorry to bother you. And then last black man in San Francisco, he's like, a, well, not not so silent hit machine. Oh, right? he was in mm -hmm. he was in uh, Sorry to Bother You. I didn't know. He lives, yeah, he lives around here too, doesn't he? He's Bay Area native. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah born and remember. raised. All right, so this is this. Yeah, your mark here is on camera, right? I, don't even I believe know. so. Yeah. So this is. <laughs> I'll, uh, I just put a shade on some parts of this, so I don't always drench everything in a shade, Thomas, either. Yeah. Like, this one I just hit, like, sort of the inside of the panel. Oh, okay, and, yeah. And a couple of the items. Gotcha. And if you if you mix up your shades like that, sometimes it helps so it's not all looking yeah. the same. Um, Are you doing that while it's kind of wet? And you doing, like, or well, is it just is, one color you dropped in there? This is just one color okay, gotcha. I dropped in. Yeah, gotcha. so, so I, just, I just threw some... So this is like an all-time world beater uh, color here from the Citadel range from Games Workshop. Milne Oil is like a classic. Like this thing will like make it through like time itself. Where it's like if you just want something to look better as far as like add some contrast to it, just darken down your recesses and shadows and stuff, this stuff is for real. Um, they do a good job. Citadel does a good job with their shades. Um, Agrax Earth Shade is the other, like, go-to. That's the brown one. Gotcha. Um, and then there's ones for certain colors. So, like, if I'm doing something purple, like, this guy has, like, some purple on him, there's actually a shade for that, which is this one here. Um, but you could, honestly, like, the, the black one and the brown one will get you, like, 80% of where you need to go. Um, but I'll do, the, I'll do the brown shade on this other side. That way you can see the difference. But sometimes you do a select one like this. Right. There's also something called pin washing, which is when you're really specific about where you're dropping it into. So you're like just coming in on, let's see if I can get this in front here. Like this one has a lot of that going on, where you're like just dropping a shade into like the recesses in the armor plates or like where some of this metal is. Like if you look in here, like I was very selective about where I put washes on some of uh, Yeah. I, I wasn't like, and also because there's a lot of different colors going on, I didn't just do like one color shade over everything. It was like what parts need like a, 
are like bone colored, which ones are metal, and that would like change my decisions sometimes. Like the shade I use on flesh is way different than like a hard surface. Right. Brief intro, brief uh, intermission. Thanks for joining, uh, Gimpy Libby. Hello, Alpha Pup. Hello, everybody. Thanks for the donations. Uh, I think this is a good time to mention that Chris is not. This isn't just a hobby for him. This is a lifestyle. <laughs> <laughs> show, show, show your thumb here, Chris. Oh, okay. Chris is losing digits to oh, this sure. hobby. So you know, part of I don't just paint. I also have to like build these, and um, there's also. Um, it's called converting or conversion. It's when you like cut a model up and add different pieces or something. You guys are probably familiar with that. Anyway, you use an X-Acto hobby knife yes. and it's super sharp. <laughs> how many uh, how I many caught, stitches? Oh, stitches. It was, it was beyond. Oh. <laughs> it was like a severing. So oh. the tip of this thumb, but it's like it it didn't even hit bone or go past my thumbnail. So, but like the end of this thumb is history. Like goodbye. Oh. <laughs> so I was in the hospital <laughs> yesterday. So Chris uh, collected a f some of his blood and put it into a little canister. Yeah, not true. Um, <laughs> we're going to be uh, doing a raffle giveaway <laughs> so that you can paint with it later. Is a lie. <laughs> you should 100% mix your blood into a paint and like That's use that in a no. minute. No? Yeah, Is we'll that, see. Okay. We'll see what happens. Sorry. So yeah, uh, no. what, actually, I don't know. I poured I this will. color just, in here. I just can't talk about what it. What colors are you using this color anywhere? Yeah, no. Um, so yes, that color is um, this guy inside here. So I, oh, okay. Thomas, experiment. Use if I can use it. Some of the directions on these say only on black or for best results a few layers over black. So gotcha. um, before you use the gray, before you paint over the gray models, make sure you are using one. Um, for most vibrant results, apply over black. But so, there are some yeah. of these that are just like you can't use it. Gotcha. And it's not a polite suggestion; like nothing will show up. Yeah. I mean, just, I mean, well, it's wet. You just that's nice. that, just that little line there. Yep. If you want to just show that to, yeah. just because of the reflection, I don't know how much it'll go away once it's so dry. It'll go away a little bit, but all these color shifting paints are metallic and glossy yeah. and shiny like that. They're meant to be. Show Lisa's Lisa's pants, I think, are in that same color. Yeah. So the gotcha. thing Yeah, I'll uh, so a term made famous by uh, Games Workshops Duncan Rhodes is two thin coats of paint. That's like a general rule that yeah. applies all the time. Whether you're using an airbrush or hand brush, whatever. Um, but especially with these color shifting paint, which I'll I'll show here too. Um, yeah, I, I was lucky enough to win these as a as an award for um, a best painted army contest earlier this year. I'd never used them before. They're super interesting. They are they're color shifting paint, which means depending on the direction you're looking at it, it'll look a little different. They're usually metallic. Um, yeah, this character, like, we're, this is almost like, if you're going for, like, the Hot Wheels effect. Yeah. Right? Is yeah, something right. it reminded yeah, yeah. me of? Yeah. It's, like, amazing for that. Amazing. And it, she's got these now, like, I don't know what, these are, like, futuristic nylon pants yeah. or something. Right? Like, some sort of, like, future hammer pant, parachute pant. <laughs> it's got this crazy blue raspberry the color. The it, like, doesn't do it justice, really. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. But you can get an idea a little bit. Um... It's a little easier to do in photos with a little more specific lighting. Mm -hmm. um, but you can see there's some pink on her shotgun back here, too. Um, but this effect, you usually have to do like many layers of this, of these. Um, so if you're putting this stuff on, Thomas, like yeah. usually to, to get the desired effect, you have to um, do more than just two thin coats. Gotcha. It's more like four or five. There are a few of these. Like like this guy or this one that I'm just like man, they're done. <laughs> like after the yeah, like I don't want to screw with it. No, I'm you like, didn't. Yeah, don't overdo them. Yeah. yeah, you don't have to overdo these. Do you guys have an extra? Uh, <laughs> That's where the ASMR crowd. <laughs> Ola Mad Hen Twelve. Thanks for joining us on a uh, Saturday. Totally. What's in here? These more. Uh, need base. Yeah. Need base. Oh, base coat. Mm -hmm. I see. I'm gonna steal some of this paper towel. Do it. Oh, tons of that stuff. That's all right. I'm gonna take. Whoopsie do. No, I'm not gonna do that. So normally when I'm uh, painting all this terrain, it's like I have an hour 
Yeah. So I throw out sheets of paper and I start airbrushing. Yep. And then that'll do it. Just trying to get through little bits at a time. For instance, like all these little trees and stuff, I you know hit with a brown this morning. Um, these might be used for Gloomhaven tomorrow. We're gonna be. Oh, by the way, we're streaming Gloomhaven tomorrow. No, we're not. We don't stream Gloomhaven. We're no. We're playing stream. Gloomhaven tomorrow, but we're not gonna stream it because streaming Gloomhaven would be really tough. Because it's that? like setup takes an hour, <laughs> right? So before you even play the game, setting up the game takes an hour. Really? Yeah, it's it's kind of brutal. Is it? Wait, is it a maybe a is it a D and D game? Ki yeah, kind of. Okay. I'm not familiar. It's the box behind you to your right. It that is a, is a beefy box. Yeah. Wow. That is so that's like double. <laughs> that's a that's a multiple rack unit right there. Um, I feel like that's a game you, you definitely could dedicate a Saturday. Like everyone come over to my place yeah. 10 a.m. and you, you could you're gonna get, be here. You all could day. get two games in. Oh really? Yeah. So so we usually do we do um, when we record we do a game in the morning. 30 minutes. We go to lunch. And then we do a game in the afternoon, and by then it's like five, six o'clock. Um, and then there's editing. Oh yeah, and all that. So we actually just—I I believe yesterday we uploaded uh, our latest episode. We came back after five months yeah. of being off. Just Ezra. schedules and well, I mean, so Tossie is in that. That's just, yeah. And Tossie and James are both acting and in a whole bunch of plays so that's you know we don't want to get in the way of that yeah one of my followers lord i course on here is is currently working on the same army i am um so we've been talking recently but yeah he said i was i was posting my initial right after i cut myself i had a post about it before i realized how severe it was <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's true. I got myself pretty good. I've stabbed myself many times, but um, <laughs> this one this one was especially bad. It was it was a brand new blade, which they're super sharp when they yeah. come out of the package. I was careless. It was a dumb mistake. I've done it a thousand. I mean, I've like something I've done a thousand times with no issue, and then I was it was just a. It's a I, I am a reminder to all of you out there. Like, be careful when you're yeah. handling stuff like that, especially with like. I've heard horror stories of guys using those hobby blades, like those X-Acto knives, to pry things, and the tip breaks off and gets in their eye. Or oh! something. Like, nasty. <laughs> like, I would, whew. Like, the thumb was, the, I'm, the thumb was fine, but like, I've heard that before, and God. that, I know, right? It, awful, I can't even, that is I'm mad. shitty luck. Seriously, it's so bad. God. So, so like, I mean, I I wouldn't use a blade like that at all. But if you're gonna like wear eye protection too, like I have goggles at home that I use for certain things. But like, mm. when I was cutting the model, I'll show you guys what I did exactly. So imagine I was I was using um, Lisa's model here. So what I was doing, I was I had the I had the knife kind of like point down on my cutting surface. And then I was just like dropping it like a paper cutter almost, right? Ooh. So it's like it's like this, and then I'm like slicing through a model. Oh. And the way I was holding it, my thumb was just a little too far under. And I was careless. I wasn't checking from a good angle. And it was just whap, and everything was just gone instantly. Because it's so sharp, it's just right. like a clean cut across like, through the model, <laughs> through myself. <laughs> the cutting mat absorbed it, but then I was just like, huh. That's this a decent is, amount of blood. This is a, this is not a band-aid wound. And then I started to yeah, I started to get lightheaded from blood loss and was <laughs> from like, the thumb. Maybe I should go to the hospital. <laughs> you, but I'll you be fine. Try to like throw iodine in there, and it's just like you're contributing to the pool gathering. I, yeah, I, I tried some super glue, and it just sort of pooled up with the blood and ran off, and was like, okay, this is beyond my rudimentary first aid skills. I'm, I'm gonna need professional help here, but it's fine. I'm good. I mean, I feel stupid. That's like the worst part. It was like, what a dumb yeah. mistake. Yeah. Um, yeah. So f be careful. I I am a, <laughs> I'm, a Alpha, I'm a warning to all of you. Alpha pup. I know someone who accidentally stabbed their boyfriend in the back almost the same way. Oh my god. That yeah. Yeah. That sounds I need more like a lie. There. <laughs> so, so okay. So that sounds uh, actually, nope. I don't know. I don't think this is the in same the story. But so 
in high school, I had a friend and his girlfriend. So when you when you pull the big, you know, in the kitchen block, when you pull the big knife out, yeah. it's like makes that shring. Yeah. So he wanted to do that, and he went shring, and it flew out of his hand. Oh god! End over end, and stabbed his girlfriend in the back. <laughs> Explain that to her parents. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> How are we he Dude, you know what? The fact that Carbon 2185 gives humanity any kind of future whatsoever <laughs> is really helpful. an uplifting you know, story. It's, it's true. Right? It's, it's, Do you think we're going to make it that far? As opposed to, uh, what is it, the Mike Judge movie? Yeah. Well, Idiocracy? Yeah. We're just watching that <laughs> No, I mean, the Amazon's currently smoldering right now. Like, uh, Elon Musk is our last chance. Right, like basically oh, in carbon, all the rich people get off as soon as they're yeah. able to get off. Well, yeah, like, that's just screw like, this. Like, do you really Elysium. think there's going to be room on any of Elon Musk's ships for anyone but Elon Musk? Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> that's a good point. And whatever model girlfriend he's dating at the time. <laughs> uh, classified Grimes is a model. Well, Grimes, right? Is that his his, uh, his bow? Nah, she'll be like uh, a, like a synthetic person. Yeah, like, like do sex. Or Ex Machina. Yes. You guys see that movie? Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I just want to. This is my dream, right? Die, get get uh, in. No, that's not part of my dream. But eventually, it's gonna happen. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's true. And then I get, you know, uh, what is it called? Cremated. Put me in a capsule and launch me in a direction of a habitable planet. I. My seeds, my, my ashes kind of disperse, the bacteria eat me, and then everything that evolves from that planet is partially me, right? Right. That's, 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 that's the dream. That's the dream. That's the dream. I'm right. the dream, baby. Good, good <laughs> Elon, luck. make it happen. That was a really bad one that I just did. What? Yeah, right there. Ah, uh, dude, I've been... Over dry brushing these since I got in here today. <laughs> it's just like the, going it, over the same ones. The only one that I kind of feel like it worked on was this one. Like that. That's pretty like, cool. That's a heavy dry brush, but like, yeah, I guess it, it works. But if you put, you can also put a wash on these after. So some people Hell do. Yeah. Some people do the shade first and then the dry brush. Yeah. Or, the, or and then you're highlighting. Um, but you can do you can do either either way. Um, like I'm I'm putting a shade on. These ones over here first, but I'll I'll highlight them after. Um, so it's it's fine, because like, yeah, maybe your highlights bring it up too much, and then you want to certain parts you want to bring back down. So like this, like you may want to keep these like highlights in some of the places, but then put a wash like in the corners and stuff I to guess. just like accentuate the difference. I definitely am gonna. So one of the things that I've learned in painting with you is that like. Black cures everything. Like I can always revert back if I always screw up. Bet on black. Yeah, always yeah. bet on black. Like what's, so, what's that Wesley Snipes movie? Passenger Fifty Seven. That's it, it's man. Classic. Man. Bet on black. Classic. That's right. Um, so, and one of the one of the pieces that I had, I, I painted, and they they it kind of looked like that guy, and then I threw a black wash over it, and it just came together. Yep. Like the paint was like way too bright and vibrant, and then the black wash with the the thing that makes it glossy, yeah, to matte that yep. paint that you showed me, yep. it just like, nope, this figure is done. So another another like more advanced step is messing with. Um, so I've heard the word like varnish throughout my whole life. I never really understood what it actually meant. It means it's just like a clear coat of something that's to serve a purpose. Either like usually it's like seals something in at the end. Mm -hmm. So it's like a clear coat to hold up all the other paint in and protect it a little bit. But you can do it midway through a project, actually. So if something is too glossy or shiny, you can do a matte coat varnish that'll take it all down and flatten it out. Um, I absolutely put like a, a, a pretty flat matte coat on everything when it's finished, for sure. I, th I think because yeah. you're painting all the light on, so you actually don't want it to be that reflective. Uh, like yeah, you want okay. it to. You want the model surface. Like these are all super matte. Like these demons here. I'll just take the brush out of my mouth. You're um, painting. We're starting with the prime. You're painting where the light source is coming from. You don't want the actual light source to hit it to kind of screw up the model. Only on certain things. Like would I have some glossiness? Like I'm selective about it. Like for this drone. Um, like an especially skin or fabric or flesh or anything like that, I want it to be very matte, and then all the like light and any reflection I'm gonna paint on. 
Like that's that's what makes it look hyper real, is when it like you control the lighting. Yeah. But then, like for the eye on this, there's a gloss coat on this guy. You can kind of see. You can see the the actual light reflecting oh, yeah, in yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. But I've also painted in. I don't know if I can get it to zoom right, but you can see I've painted in my own reflection. But it's also semi-gloss, so it's reflecting on its own, and it makes it stand out from the rest of it that may be flatter, right, as far as finish goes. Oh, yeah, yeah. See what I'm saying there? But I, I really, I prefer... It makes sense with the materials finish. you're trying to, like, portray it to have those qualities, um, but not a lot. It didn't... Painting on that, that paint that took away the gloss just, like, didn't make sense to me until I saw it yeah, in action. You, you were like, no, believe me, just do it. Yeah. I was like, what? I was like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, okay, cool. Because it's clear. You also can't see it really going yeah. on. Yeah. Um, it's, it's kind of a trick. It's like, I'm making this worse. <laughs> what are you talking about? You have to have a, yeah, you have to, there's an ugly stage that I, I believe models go through, and some for a very extended amount of time. Like, they're in the ugly stage for most of their life until they're finished. And then, like, that last five or ten percent really finishes them off and they look amazing right but there's like a big chunk through most of it where like most of this model looks horrible but it's like <laughs> you have to have a vision of where you're going with it because you can get there you just have to keep you have to keep right. darkening your darks brightening up your brights yeah, messing with your colors me. it's not for me but. so but or you can also be you can you know, there are, there are people who freestyle and, you know, do their own color schemes. There are also people who paint by number, so to speak, and just, like, follow a plan. They have their set scheme, um, and they just st try to stay within the lines, follow the process, and it works out. Either way is fine, and I, I, I dance in between those two. When you go, when you actually go and play 40K, yeah. how often are the, are the, uh, the armies not standard? You like, mean like, what do you mean? Like the, the, you know, the in the book you were showing me with the Space Marines, yep. you know, and how they're painted. Do most people do that? So the nice thing about Warhammer and 40K and, and the way Games Workshop approaches it is that their, the lore and their universe that they've built, like, you know, their intellectual property is like very flexible on purpose so that you can be creative, do your own things, and do something wild that's just yours. Gotcha. Like, I, I guess the, so um, what is commonly, it would, it would be like a custom, or some people say like homebrew is a term that gets used a lot, like a homebrew chapter means like, oh yeah, it's a space marine army that follows kind of like the regular rules, but its color scheme is mine because this is like, right. it, it could be for whatever reason. So it, but it's a good, they're very open to like personalizing your own thing. A lot of are there are a lot of like rules lawyering in there. No, you can't have that. You can't do that action because it's not associated with that marine class because of the way you painted it. Yes. <laughs> I'm just gonna say yes. Period. There's a lot of that. Um, for better or worse. Sometimes that's the right approach. Sometimes you can go too far and be a rules Nazi. I, I mean, know. is there paint schemes for? I mean, um, I guess rank and different. Yeah. You know, different things in there. Yeah. So if you do have. Yes. You know. So you can follow it very closely. It's called like codex adherent, I think, is probably the the like in-game term for that. But like this marine character, um, Omnicrus RX. We definitely can read the chat. Thanks for joining in. It's your first time here, Alpha Pup. Um, if I do die, you get first right of refusal to launch my body <laughs> through the White House window, my corpse. <laughs> and if you're not available to do that, put in a capsule shoot in space. Sorry. No, you're good. <laughs> you are good. Yeah, so we, we we do have a vertical monitor set up, and we're reading the chat. It's working out really well. Yeah, this is great, actually. Yeah. You guys have a good setup in here. This is the first time we've done this. We don't do this during D&D. <laughs> we have enough distractions during oh, our yeah, sessions. Yeah. <laughs> reading whatever the heff is talking about in there, orc <laughs> recipes. Oh, yeah. We, yeah, what yeah. was it? We, so we had, a, we had an episode where... Um, uh, the PCs, because they had a, 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 we had a guest star on who was very pacifist. Uh huh. Um, he befriended a couple of ogres, and then uh, <laughs> to get them to not eat the horses, one of the PCs <laughs> cooked some Stay dead orcs. Us. Right. <laughs> okay. So go on. So um, 
so in that episode, you know, uh, Andros and the characters making orc, roasting orc, and in the chat, they had come up with 190 different orc recipes. <laughs> You know, like, you know, uh, pulled orc barbecue. Okay, sure. You know, names of recipes. Yep. So. <laughs> <laughs> the chat is the chat is its own beast. That's, right? that, that's, that's where the magic happens, right? Yeah, exactly. Definitely learned that in the early stage of <laughs> streaming. It's like, what happens in the chat, just don't try to contain it. Just yep. let it happen, and, like, for better or for worse, they're watching. You got some subscribers, too. It's cool. Oh, Lucifer for Vilchak. Vilchak, second month. Thank you. Yes. That means that, what time is it over there right now? In Europe? Yeah. Nine the, hours uh, It's late. Yeah, it's late. Eleven? About? Uh, over there in Eleven o'clock last night, I was I getting my third cup of coffee in. <laughs> It's kind of funny when uh, when Lucifer Vilchik first came on, he's you know he said he was from um, Chechia. Like, what is that? I've never Chechnya? heard. Che no, Chechia. Oh, Chechia. Which is actually um, the the new title for the Czech Republic. Oh, really? So like, it, oh, I didn't know this. What eight years ago or, or no three or four years ago they decided be, to say that Chechia. they're Chechia oh, okay. because that would fit on a football jersey. Priority street easier oh, than, the Czech, love it. than the Czech, Re Czech Republic. So right? I respect that decision. <laughs> Me too. I 100 so they, so they changed their country so name because it would fit on a soccer jersey. Oh, that's great. <laughs> like we're not under any kind of confusion as to what we're trying to achieve here. Yeah, let's be real. <laughs> that's all. And the country is behind it. Hell yeah. Yeah. What's it was a, I believe, a referendum. I love that. That that's that's referendum worthy. Oh yeah. Not you know, we're not gonna get into that <laughs> at all. But that's no, hold referendum. on, what position are you taking? <laughs> I must take the opposite. I would actually uh, yeah, I'm gonna come in here one day and like rant about some pro conservative stance just to listen to you painfully <laughs> argue the liberal point. <laughs> it's, it's I mean it's there. Chechia. Chechkia. Chichkia. The second CH should be with a K. Oh. Chechkia? Chechkia. But who am I to judge? I appreciate the correction. Yeah. I'm not judging yeah, at you all. you tell me. I, don't, yeah. I just heard about this three seconds ago. <laughs> I went, I oh, man, I remember just like being in Spanish class in high school and this is one of my buddies, Anthony, this is like a minimum requirement. He had no desire to be there and his pronunciation of all the Spanish was just like <laughs> painful. Like, it was very clear. Yo, Pablo, like when they went around and they made you like read out loud, he was Saying just like. Saying all the J's. Hard. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, uh, j yeah. I was. Uh, Don't be that guy. So Don't be I, that American. I know, you know, I, I, I know like 10 words in Spanish and basically Where's the bathroom? <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I went to Spain, and my accent was very Mexican, like as far as the like Spanish. Mexican Spanish. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I was yeah like, oh. You know, so. You get. I, I feel like, in most of my travels, like, you get a phrase down, and you try. And then at some point, it's long enough for them to finally ad admit, this is painful, I'm going to switch to English <laughs> for your sake. Yes. So, okay, thank you so much. But the, the, the effort is appreciated. But uh, another upside of Carbon 2185, uh, apparently the population, for better or for worse, is a little bit more educated in that like everyone starts with two languages. <laughs> so English and another language, most people do, depending on like what Is you it switch orc to. Or <laughs> Elvish, dude. I, you know what? At it's I'd like imagine Klingon <laughs> should be an option. Oh, probably. <laughs> people just had to kind of dive straight into futurism with like Elvish and Klingon oh. should be an option in there. So Shadowrun would be really fun, except for I really can't stand orcs and elves and magic in a future cyberpunk. I it's just, it's just they have orcs. Yeah, forty k has orcs too, but they're sort of the comic relief, and, <laughs> and they're actually I think they're handled in like such a great way because they're like they they're so unique, and even though it's like orcs in the future, they're so funny, and the way that they like write them into their own sci-fi is like is hilarious and genius. I think it's just like 
their ideas around it. And then there's like some level of space elf too, but they're not. It's not that obvious and heavy-handed. They're just like Xenos. They're just aliens who are like you know more slender and yeah. faster than humans or whatever, but have their own thing going on. So a lot of people think of 40k as like fantasy in space. Mm-hmm. Which I could see, like there's like the death type of armies. There's like some of those archetypes still. The thing that I close combat weapons. When I hear about 40k, I always am like, there's nothing redeeming about this world. Like, why don't you just like off yourself Are you from the get go? The hopelessness is what it's, makes it's it. It's so great. bleak and like. Yes, it it is <clears throat> the grim dark, right? Yeah. So the if I get the book, I could read the like opening statement that goes with everything they release. It has it's like a short half paragraph and. It usually ends with, and in the the grim darkness of the far future, there is only war, I think is how it goes. And gotcha. the grim darkness, you can just refer to the like feel of 40K as the grim dark. Hmm. So like the bleakness, the fact that like an individual human life is basically meaningless, but like in mass, you can make a difference. Um, the main characters, for the most part, aren't even like regular humans. They've been like augmented or improved in some way. Like a regular human is like a subclass almost. <laughs> They're like disposable. Um, so, but like that that feel, it's like it's pretty metal and yeah and hopeless. Like as a mom or a dad in the 40k universe, do I just have kids to push the empire? Like my kids are gonna be proud soldiers. They're gonna die on the battlefield one day and bring glory to the family. Yeah, they're gonna die for the emperor in complete glory, and that's how like, like you're happy to do so. Like, there's a lot of humanity that's like happy to sacrifice themselves, and and it's like it's a messed up. The Imperium, like humanity in the future, is like massively flawed. Um, like they're going in different directions. They're not on the same page all the time. Um, they fight against each other. Some of them are like, like worship. The emperor is a god. Other people are like very against that. Yeah, it's complicated. It's basically a horrible place to be. And how does that how does that come out in the actual like tabletop game? So um, a big a, uh, a big dynamic in the game. There's there's many factions. I don't even like I could name them off the top of my head, but there's like I don't know a dozen or so. But the main ones are really like humanity as the empire, like the imperium, and then. Chaos are the traitors, basically. So they're either like ancient or new traitors. Um, but some of them, depending on how you look at it, it's like a perspective thing. Like these guys coming out of like the warp, which is like not reality, and coming in and like waging war against humans are actually like doing it for what they believe is like the betterment of humanity in the long run. And they're like, the Imperium is out of date. They don't know how to like even communicate to each other over long distances. Like there's all these separated worlds. They all like some of them are ten thousand years behind technologically, and like we're we're the realists and we're here to like actually like we actually get it. And like you either believe in the emperor or not because he's sort of like he's sort of dead. Um, and depending on who you ask, they would admit that or not. Um, hmm. So it's it's really like the 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 severing of of people and things like in the galaxy is kind of like what it's all about, um, but it's it's bad no matter who you are. Like, <laughs> um, like as an an average citizen could live in like on a hive world, which is literally a city across every continent mm. that goes like hundreds of miles into the sky, and like it's just this like massive hive filled with billions and trillions of people, and like you know for a couple of generations your family might just work like the water pumps on like substation eleven underground and. You know, you could expect maybe half your kids to like fall into the the like grinding gears of the machinery half the time. But it's like, <laughs> hey, you know, it's just part of life. You know, it's all good. And then who knows? Maybe there's like a massive alien invasion at some point. And then, but it's basically just constant warfare. Um, people have to have like super hard lines about things, and like uh, it's a very oppressive and horrible society to live in. But um, it's like it's like a future version of Risk, I guess, turned all the way up. Right, because it's mm-hmm. a war game. It's not a role-playing game. Right. If it was like a straight-up role-playing game, it might be hard to like visualize. What, what would your motives be there. for right. doing anything? <laughs> um, but I mean, Questions. you can you before can your kids fall in the thing. How many inches do they get to move? Right. <laughs> <laughs> About six. 
give or take. <laughs> but yeah, it's really like it's a it's a war game. Um, so it's about strategy and tactics and putting together a force that like works cohesively and it's like synergizes with itself. Um, has like some powerful characters that have like aura effects on different units. Um, but it's about like bringing out an army that does certain things. I I think looks a certain way and can like um, pull off different moves and stuff. Like some armies are close combat, fly in and try to like bash your face in, in various ways. Some are like heavy on machines, vehicles, and walkers and stuff. Some mm-hmm. are just like all infantry. There's ones that are just monsters basically. Um, so you can you can pretty much find anything you're looking for. But really, it, it's like it is a war game. It's not as much of a. They have some like smaller role playing games that they've released yeah. that are like in the universe and it you know goes through like the multiple levels and you're walking on like that gridded surface right as a team yeah um, and that there's more of like that class based element in it and all those things more like D&D I, I guess from the limited amount I know but like 40k normally like if you're going to play a normal game it's really about um, strategy and like outmaneuvering your opponent yeah. and it's like a one on one tactical battle and how long is each, like, sort of an average match? It depends. Uh, but, like, a normal game um, where you could have, I mean, I have 50, 75 or so models on the table. That's, like, a kind of a standard game <laughs> is big. Like, that's a lot. Right. Way more than what I brought today. Um, so the be- amount of time painting versus playing... I mean, I'm a painter Equivalent. first, but, <laughs> but some people sp- some people definitely spend more time playing. Um, but an average game is a couple hours, maybe three hours. Omnicris, yes, Omnicris RX. Um, we're painting to set up the scene for Carbon 2185, but Chris is traditionally a Warhammer painter. He paints all figurines. He's in here to help us paint these things, um, but largely a painting stream. Um, September 8th and September 15th, we will be playing Carbon 2185, and you will see these finished and painted models appearing on the table then. Yep. <laughs> finished and painted. <laughs> yeah, as far as we, we can get, uh, I'm ready to call this one done and throwing it away. And I play Carbon too, but I'm new. But like yeah. the, the 40K stuff is just where that's where I started. That's the background. It's Q&A, man. Ask yeah. a question in the stream. We'll talk about whatever you want to talk yeah, about. Yeah, this is just kind of... Normally when I paint, I just... I'm in dead silence and don't do yeah. anything but just go, 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 <laughs> go. Yeah. Well, we did, uh, so created some uh, we created some NPCs, and I was like, I need to give them stats in case Thomas and crew decides to attack them. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we went through, and uh, it was kind of fun buying gear for affluent NPCs and poor yeah. NPCs because one of the things I did for you guys was give you money to spend yeah. to start with. And... One thing I quick, quickly realized in Carbon is that like it, everything is expensive, so the 500k one long starting money yeah. might not be enough to do, or might be the perfect. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think that it was it was enough. Okay. Um, you know, Amy's, uh, what is it? The, her vice or, or fear? Yeah. Um, was any more. Um, enhancements. Yeah, she doesn't right? like enhancements at all. So, so that saves the, her money. The starting 500k, because that's her starting enhancements. Is that, you know, legitimate? Whoa. Because <laughs> she can't do any more. She she doesn't like enhancements though, right? That was her vice. No, it was like. Uh, she, it, it was, she doesn't trust people who don't have enhancements. I think Amy actually, you can write it in the chat, but I think it was. Um, any new enhancements? Ah, uh, okay. So I don't. It, it was something, something along that lines of where the character creation ones were okay, but the one thing that I, I think you probably noticed was that um, AC is kind of low in comparison to normal D and D. That's because you you buy the vest and the vest gives you an AC yeah. attributed with a stat, but you know, get more. Sixteen AC. Do you? Yeah. Mine's at he's least he's min maxing right carbon already. <laughs> the but Power you get armor. more AC for hiding behind things during a gun battle. That's where the oh. extra added AC comes from. So I can hide behind Aaron. You can hide behind Aaron. Yeah, 
His, we, I think Lisa did that in one of our sessions. Like, hit behind me. He hit behind you. Yeah, when we were in the, you know, the second engagement. Because she wasn't, one of us wasn't doing too well. Was it her? I think so. Yeah, this is, it's going to be, it's going to be an experiment. Um, because I don't know if it's anything I've planned, yeah, it's going to kill anybody. I hope not, but like, whatever. Hey, it happens. <laughs> Wait a minute. But, um, yeah, they have basically the equivalent of SOMA right now is SF in the Bay Area is basically broken down into districts. District 5 is kind of the SOMA and the Tenderloin area, and they it's basically tall ceilings, tall buildings, and just like a massive shithole. I don't know that you would disagree with that being what it is. That's like, today, oh, spot right? on, yeah. <laughs> I think I think the rich people would migrate there, but I don't know. Um, they they basically have uh, South San Francisco Daily City is like where the rich people live in District One, um, and most SF blue collar workers are in District Four, which is Outer Sunset Golden Gate Park. So SF is District Five and District Four. South of that is Three Two One. Three being like um, Pacifica. Two being like dog patchy and one being uh, daily city ish. Is and then so everything like East Bay, right? South Bay, that's all wasteland. Um, they they do have a actually I can tell you right now they do have a south east north west and I will read it verbatim to you. So south of San Francisco, what does it say? Uh, if I can open this thing up real quick. Um, to the south of District 1 sits the St. Francis Tree Preserve, carefully maintained, uh, expensively, uh, expensive genetically engineered tree line roughly a mile thick, and the edge of District 1. Um, and it acts as a wall or a city perimeter. Despite its natural appearance, the trees form a heavily fortified wall to protect migration into the city. Attempting to cross this wall in any way is a class 1 offense, and security is permitted to shoot on site. Uh, yeah, South. Right. Where is that? Uh, dish, Daily Oakland? City, Daily basically. City. Yeah. Okay. Is that about? Yeah, I get Daily City. Daily City. Chris, can you hand me that paint uh, that's way out there? South is of there. there. In there. I think so. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Good. South of there is more badlands, wasteland washed along the coastline has led to decay. Diseases spread easily. With a few communities live this far south. With what few communities live down there? Out here, survivors take up the art of scavenging, hoping to sell enough scrap to leave the Badlands and move to San Francisco or LA, but most realize that this dream is too difficult to achieve legally, uh, so turn to gang crime to sustain themselves. The so what's Electro a... Diablos own that region. Oh, okay, so that would be a reason not to move, just move to the woods and, and live your life? There, yeah, there, so there are no real woods, and also like exposure to pretty heavy toxic elements out there is not really a good thing. Gotcha. So, wait, so the environment isn't good in the future? <laughs> I don't think you need to be like a soothsayer to predict that. <laughs> <laughs> like it's, at this point, it's like a given. It's almost laughably a given right now. Oh, God, that's so sad. Okay. Fuck. <laughs> Do you see the Greenland? They did the uh, march up to their melted glacier. They left a plaque there that says, hey, we know what's happening, um, but only you in the future can t can uh, understand whether or not we took the steps needed to fix it. And they put the carbon parts per million in the atmosphere as well as the average temperature. I was like, that's pretty grim. Yeah. It's pretty grim. Very well, 40K. Very grim. Dark. <laughs> well, I mean, hopeless. Hope is the first step on the road to disappointment. That's a 40K quote. <laughs> That's like in the codex. Nice. That sums things up pretty well. I, so I just dry brushed this super quick just with a metallic a camera here. So this is like, I just did a metal over the primer. Yes. Like, I'm talking like that's as little effort as possible. Yeah. <laughs> right? It's not bad. It this is over just a, a flat black primer and then... This steel from Vallejo, which is a really good Spanish-based, um, they're I think they're based out of Barcelona. Their paint is uh, is awesome. They're not based out of Vallejo. <laughs> I don't think so. No. 
You can um, smell where paints are from, eh? <laughs> I can taste where they're from. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, you guys have two different views on, like, I was like, Thomas, my buddy who I paint with, he, like, licks his, the tip of his brush all the time. Not anymore. And you're like, it's, it's a habit don't I'm do that. I'm, I'm trying to break it, okay? It's a, it's a bad habit. Um, I was like, what could go wrong? I got a wet palette, so I don't have to do that as much anymore. But it, it, it was really, it became a paint consistency thing right. to keep things thin and to keep the tip sharp. But uh, it's a bad habit, yeah. And I'm probably toxified myself to some degree. Because these certainly don't say non-toxic anymore. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, Vallejo's great. They make all kinds of stuff. And um, they put their stuff in dropper bottles, which is super Amazing. convenient. I mean, these pots are, like, okay, but they're fine. But a dropper bottle is superior for airbrushing and stuff especially. So when I first started painting, I didn't really know much about how the paints worked. And this was, you know, like a like year ago. Handed. Yeah. And the, I've, you know, had a bottle. I couldn't get the paint out. So I squeezed really hard. And then it <laughs> the cap fly shot. Off? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. The little stopper flew yep. out and just shot everywhere. And that's what, um, the, we have a big light over there. And one day I thought we had a, a mouse poop in it. Is but that was, what that is? It was actually the paint and <laughs> squeezing that bottle. It shot up and into the light. I did that all over my desk. It's like, uh, and then I called yep. Chris. I was like, "Damn, that sucks." He's like, "Oh yeah, that the bottles do that." Yeah, <laughs> yeah so, some dropper bottles are better than others. Some will pop off. These color shifting ones do that. I mean, that's just because like there's a little ball inside, right? That gets stuck up in there, or is it just a claw? No, sometimes it's just the bottle, like. Again, keep the brush out of your mouth. Um, like these ones, the, the yeah. cap is just kind of sitting in here. Yeah. So if you squeeze hard enough, it'll just pop out. Yeah. And go shooting everywhere. Yeah. That's what she said. <laughs> yeah, these don't have mixing balls in them. It took us, how long have we been streaming? And that's our first, that's what she said reference. Oh, I don't think that's true. I mean, today? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Today, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is meant to be yeah people are not people all right that's a question uh m m bison from street fighter is that yes. one of those miniatures or no the one my, in the middle my my female commissar has kind of an m bison -y hat yes i will admit that but that's the standard in the future <laughs> so this character um this is from artel w which i believe they're i think they're based in russia um, but they're like a, a smaller, like boutique, yeah, mini company. Um, but this model, like the style and everything, this is a common type of character in 40k. This is a human who leads the infantry troops and executes deserters. And there's a rule for that in the game. So like if you're a bunch of troops out here start getting decimated and they're starting to flee, she Moral. executes one of them, so you remove one additional, but then the rest fall in line. Okay. Again, very grimdark. So is that, that's not, so that, that's not third party content, is it? It's... No, just the model is. The model's third party. Okay. And they allow that? It depends. Um, I don't think I could play, like, at a games workshop store right. with this model. Like, I think they only accept their own stuff in certain cases. But, like, playing a friend or something. And you just say this is representing this class from the book. And they would know right away anyway. Gotcha. Like, okay. upon looking at this character, they'd be like, wow, that's a cool female commissar model. Where'd you get that from? Like, it's gotcha. she's recognizable. It's not, like, totally right. weird. Um, I use a lot of third-party stuff. Um, I love searching out alternative models and things that are cool. Um, even for just parts. I'll like find third party companies that make weird stuff and use just like the weapons that they have on it or something on something else. That's how I cut myself, you know? <laughs> Altering the models. <laughs> I love to do the alterations. This isn't enough terrain, is it? To make a room? Um Depends. we can try a room. I think so. No, this is definitely enough. I don't know if we have enough done to make a room. Um, do you have blacklight in here somewhere? No. Okay. So I do have blacklight paint that goes on clear but sticks, and it, it works on larger canvases. I got a canvas in my house that, that uses it. Um, but 
on the minis here, um, after we painted these, I threw on in certain places like this guy's goggles and also uh, his vest uh, has like a black light attribute to it. So can't really see it because there's no black light, but it should glow underneath the black light. Nice. Okay, I have way too much middle gray. I need a stone gray. I have paint too. Or do you have what? Do you have the the base coat? Yep. This is a gray. Or like that. This was used from. Let me see. Actually, I think this might be right over primer. So oh, this, yeah. I don't. Let me see if I brought this. Ex I know what gray this came from. I don't know if I brought it, but I have ones that are close. I've got. I have this that's really close. Okay. Yeah. I this would say is use either one of these uh, if you want. This is or, my Joanne fabric black and white base coat. <laughs> here we go. Uh, here we go. That's pretty close. Oh, you were looking for the base coat. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's just black. I do have. I do have pure black here, if you need it. I screwed this up. Damn it. There are no acts. no wait, happy there are no accidents. mistakes, <laughs> just happy accidents. Can you tag yeah, this Bob a Bob Ross, Ross stream? <laughs> I mean, a lot of Bob Ross's concepts would work. Um, a lot of the stuff he does, like, he paints on a wet palette. I don't know if you ever noticed that, but he has like a liquid white wet coat of paint on his canvases. Mm. Next time you catch it, I don't know if that it, when that left. So it's, you. it's you know, well, they, somebody got the rights to Bob Ross and streams 24-7 Bob Ross I've on seen Twitch. It, yeah. I've seen it. I've watched It's hilarious. Yeah, it's nice. <laughs> Again, like, the Ruined. magic is in the chat room. Yeah. No, it's ruined. <laughs> saved. How did he do it? Really funny. But honestly, that ruined saved thing <laughs> is true for all this stuff too. Like I'm painting a Warhammer or D and D miniature or something, and I'm like, oh, why did I do that? It's ruined. And then I don't know. You do the next step, put a highlight on that sucker, and you're like, saved, yeah. Bob Ross style. Okay, so this stuff I actually have um, consistency for my airbrush. So it's so like, it's super thin. Yeah. Oh well. Two coats, right? It's two, two thin coats. <laughs> two thin coats. Too many cooks. Too many coats. <laughs> Remember um, when too many cooks was a thing? Yes. That was mind bending. I don't. Really? What? Oh, yeah. oh my god. Yeah, we'll have to, One of the best. Uh, you can only see it. I can't even explain it. <laughs> it was this thing. I, the only setup I'll give it is uh, what well, Adult Swim, right? Is where it came from. Oh, really? Yeah. And I, I don't missed know. it? Was it an adult swim? So it was a short. It's not like a, it, it's long, it's like a few minutes long. And it was, uh, it, it's it was, like an 80s sitcom opening. Yep. And the whole thing is like a sequence. weird stylistic tribute to like 80s kind of TV and movies and things. Like it breaks into like a G.I. Joe style cartoon at one point. There's a cop show element, which is hilarious. And it's just a never ending intro. <laughs> and it's long. And it was pitched by some guy. Who was working over there? He like emailed his boss or something. This is this is what I've heard. He was like, uh, "Hey, here." He just pitched the idea in an email, and then the guy wrote back and was just like, "Yes, yes, yes." Period. And then he was like, "But it's gonna air at like 2:30 a.m. and it's just gonna be a weird thing we throw out there that'll blow people's minds." And then it like went viral back. What well, this was a, at least five years ago. Yeah. Probably, right. Yeah. But like you start watching it and you start to question your own sanity before. <laughs> <laughs> That's like but it's also really funny, and it's really well done. And like the the post editing they did with all the credits and everything is hilarious. I started, I guess, smoking weed around the same time. I discovered <laughs> I discovered Adult Swim, so it was definitely like, am I like, is this the way it's supposed to come off? Or yeah. Is this like really weird? Like, I mean, like Space Ghost. I was like, what the <laughs> fuck is this? Yeah. Like this doesn't make exactly. any sense. Yeah, like if you if you were stoned at three in the morning and, and caught that sort of out of the corner of your eye on, and then it just ke it keeps going and you're like, what is this show? <laughs> and then the intro just never ends. Like, I'm pretty sure you'd think your mind had snapped at that point. I'm I'm really surprised you have not ever seen it. Yeah, we'll have to make that happen. Yeah, it's like I want to end this stream right now so we can go. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those. Yeah. Imagine pitching that. Well, that was you a, have to, yeah. yeah the, it was such a reach, one. but then they got it, right? Yeah. They were like, okay, sure. 
Um, you wanted me to dry brush this. Yeah, because right? I wanted to add some, what is this, dark net What color? Outline. Just a highlight? Just, just a highlight, yeah. Okay. okay. And this is when I ruin a model, because <laughs> I, I was going to get in there <laughs> with this one. So it either it just, works or it doesn't. We'll see. I just grabbed paint today. Like, I got all kinds yeah. of random shit here. And I feel like I need this is this is future. This is cyberpunk. I need to start throwing some neon greens and purples in yes. here. Yeah. And it doesn't need to match because that's a style choice in the future. Yeah. Right? Loud um, and plaid and uh, Yeah, carbon can be way more colorful than some than the grim dark. Stuff yeah. <laughs> Where they don't need to worry about aesthetics because like you're not going to be here long enough to appreciate it. <laughs> There's no art scene there. I mean, I love color in 40k though. Like these demons are an opportunity for me to get crazy, right? With the flames and the pink and everything. Yeah. But like, the Death Guard are so dirty and grimy, but they're so good for, for what 40K is. But like, you know, there's no neon in there. But like, uh, yeah, you can, you can just, you have, you have a lot more freedom with like the color and design for Carbon, like for this character. Like these two are just much more vibrant, right? I guess it's like mm -hmm. a vibrancy. I mean, there's really vibrant 40K armies, don't get me wrong. There's like bright yellow, neon, Almost every faction you could find something like that, but there's a lot of black. There's a lot of black, brown, and darkness. At a certain point, too, like, it becomes a a, a, a tactical flaw to stand out on the battlefield. Well, right? oh, yeah. You know, some of the things, like, the Space Marines are so overpowered and overwhelming in the lore. That's how they're usually described. That like they show up in all bright colors, and they're like, "We're not hiding. We're here to <laughs> we're here to kill you, you loudly. <laughs> we are here to dominate this world." Like some of the best performing chapters of Space Marines or Legions back in the day, in like the lore, were the loudest, most aggressive, overly obvious ones. Actually, the like sneaky ones are in the minority. I would say there was a. Yeah, it's it's weird. I was trying to figure out a uh, tie-in, but um, I don't know why it reminded me of like everyone is equipped with a Neuralink and Carbon, and then the question came up. Uh, I think it was on the Discord. It's like, well, wouldn't it report your crimes and activities to mm -hmm. the police and stuff like that? It's like one, like the police force is all but just a shell of enforcing rich people's, uh, protecting rich people's property, and two, like. They wouldn't sell as well if it was like <laughs> it, used to track yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. you out, if it just ratted you out, yeah. I mean, there's got to be like. I mean, yeah, they've thought of that. But so yeah, so when looking through the, uh, you know, the things that you can buy, those neural, you know, the, uh, uh, the communicators, right? Yep. They've got handheld units, earpiece units, and embedded units. So embedded units can't be detected. Or uh, it's like in your skin or something. Yeah, it's like implanted in your head. So. Straight to the brain. Yep. I mean, you'd you'd want like you'd probably want to have like multiple networks that you're on at the same time, wouldn't you? Like, Just like you'd have different servers on Discord. Yeah. Right. You'd you'd have like a private. Yep. Well, yeah. Ideally, it's private. <laughs> you know, that's I, the thing, right? You know. Yeah. I don't know how. Or you have a you have a neural link that's like the official story. Well, no, I, I feel like uh, those will... They, they basically want to know what you're talking about to sell you more shit. To show you the right ads. <laughs> that's so it's basically... Targeted it, ads? It, yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's, well, it's that, not that far off. That's the benefit of having 500 yuan or whatever it is. Um, is to not get it. I was able to buy ad-free. <laughs> <laughs> an ad-free neural link. Like. In, in, the, in the RPG, it doesn't matter, but it's on principle. <laughs> Don't fucking give me any ads. <laughs> yeah, in real life, you know, all of our tablets, when we open them up, they've got random Amazon ads. It's $15 <laughs> per tablet to pay to have the ads removed. God, I fucking hate everything. Okay. Like that. Ready Player One, though, it, it, has everyone seen it? No. No? Uh, have you read it? No. No. Don't no. worry, no, you're not going to spoil it for okay. me. Okay. Well, basically, a guy wants to take over the VR world in the book. Um, and it's essentially the corporate takeover. It's Everything right. is in there. So when you own it, you own 
the real world. Um, in the movie, though, it's like he, he wants to basically use up all the visual space inside your uh, headset for ad serving. Like, it's basically like a big right. Vegas slot machine in there. Um, and that's, you know, that elicited like a fucking visceral response from me. <laughs> Still, he was, the movie was so different than the book that I started rooting for the bad guy. I was like, at this point, just give him VR. <laughs> like, you kids don't know what you're doing. Steven Spielberg, you totally screwed it up for me. I hate everything about this. Seriously? Yeah. <laughs> it's just, yeah, I was really jaded by it. But ads are a thing. And I feel like people will probably start to hack their neural links um, and not do a good job at it. Are people, like, deformed, you think, because they tried to hack something and now there's spyware on their neural link oh, that they yeah. can't get rid of. Anybody see the trailer for the, what is the movie, Lexi? Is that at, uh, the movie about a, it's a comedy about a guy whose phone like takes over? I have not seen that. Uh, no, I've never the, heard of it. It's the guy, I'm like, yeah. It, apparently it was shot up here too. Looks kind of funny. His phone takes over him? Well, or? it's basically like Siri, except for AI and a comedy. Uh, like a raunchy comedy. So, you know, he gets home and, like, and you know, Siri goes off. Is it time to masturbate now? <laughs> like, what? No. Oh, That's, no. I don't do that. It's like, you do that every night. <laughs> you sure come you home know. and... Hey, <laughs> And then, you like, no, that's a lie. <laughs> it, you know, it is like, you know, sh let me see you taking a shower. You know, and then it, the phone sends dick pics to his office. <laughs> the phone has got people pegged. It's like, no, it's, no. It's like her, but they like not, this. you know. I, I would, that kind of technology, you lean into it, like, my phone sends a reminder. It's like, is it time to masturbate now? I'm like, I don't know what you got on the docket. <laughs> <laughs> Show me where your top recommendations are. Depends. I'll tell you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Siri, clear my calendar. <laughs> <laughs> Hold my calls. <laughs> well, that is one thing. It's like, hey, you want to go out tonight? Are you available? And you know, he's like, let me check my calendar, trying to get out of it. And his phone just yells. You have nothing on the you calendar. All you're going to do is go home and violently masturbate. Right? <laughs> we all know how your Tuesdays go. That joke uh, is apparently, it's in the trailer several times, so probably right. in the movie also several times. It might be old by the time it comes out. That spy shower, hell yeah. I mean, Mystery. I'm envisioning a world, people already are like streaming themselves eating, Streaming themselves having sex, they're streaming themselves. You mean today or in carbon? In, <laughs> in today, now? yeah. They're yeah. streaming themselves painting stuff, they're streaming themselves <laughs> having a mental breakdown. Like, I imagine a day where I can just like turn on the tube and, like, what's this random person in India doing right now? Sure. Click, click, click. I mean, Tasi was doing daily vlogs. I just I couldn't imagine that much. Filming and editing. Yeah, that's a lot of work. You gotta have it down to like a chopped up science at that yeah. at some point. But his vlogs I mean Tossi is super entertaining, so his vlogs are really good too. His yeah, the graphic his intro is like polishes all hell. My only downside is that he's using uh royalty free music for free unless you monetize. So when we played his video, it's like we got copyright hits. I'm like, come on. That is a scam. That is a yeah. total scam. They, they say, it's, don't use royalty-free music on any platform because when you do, it's not royalty-free. That's, like, that's, that's such a smart strategy to those, for those assholes to do because they're like, oh, a bunch of people are going to download and use it, and then we can claim all of it. Like, yeah. We don't need to keep a promise to people we don't know. If people spent half the time progressing humanity as they spend trying to swindle other people out of their money, we'd be so far advanced by now. Yeah, but... We'd be able to at least 3D print these with color. <laughs> yeah, but then where's the... Think fun? about how much money, though, we swindled out of the Hefner. 
<laughs> <laughs> so let's uh, you know let's uh, keep it easy on the you know swindling the... talk. Yeah. <laughs> we're not no we are we're providing yeah, entertainment. Dude. No we're. We're fighting trying. Dick we're trying. playing games. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh yeah. god. Thanks so much, Hef. So uh, really uh, those of you who, you, man. who are watching, um, thanks to everybody who donated uh, last week. We're giving away a 5e Dungeons & Dragons book on Monday. Are we? Yes. Yes, we are. Because I paid for you Facebook ads to tell everyone about it. Um... And you know, trying to grow grow our audience. So, but when, so five e book, and and the way that the Hefner is donated today, we'll see what happens on Chaos Agents on Tuesday. I kind of want to give this away, and I guess five on not on that one, but maybe on the Carbon Stream. Um, and this is an unpainted mini uh, for use for a futuristic cyberpunk esque game. Um, the reason why I have it, I didn't you know buy an extra one. I got one from Hero Forge that was damaged, oh, that I was okay. able to salvage, and I made a big stink out of it. So they sent me a new one anyway, <laughs> and now I feel bad. So we should give it away. So this this goes into the giveaway coffers. Nice. Oh yeah, I helped you fix that. One. Yeah, no, you helped me fix the other one. But yeah, this yeah. one is. How did? What was that? What was wrong with it? The How arm broke, like in shipping. Oh okay. The arm broke, and it, it did it again. Yeah, but like transporting minis. It's lethal, yeah. and it happens all the time, and it's super common. And I think I, I probably break something every time I transport anything. Um, it's just part of it. Yeah, you got to have that super glue handy <laughs> for any uh, exacto <laughs> accidents or for yourself or your models. Yeah, it's very important. So something you can do like with dry brushing, since you guys are already doing that, is like I also stipple stuff sometimes, which is like you're doing this motion. Mm. Oh yeah, yeah. Right. Which is if I put it on camera, it's more like you're not dragging the brush over everything to get the edges to pick up the paint. You're like driving it in like this, and that can add if you do it on the edges and stuff. Yeah. It makes like a more natural dusting like, look, yeah. right? Yeah. So it looks like it's been like sort of beaten up or worn in different areas. Like, that's that's another easy thing to do you can do while you're dry brushing. Um, and these, like, you can see I just dry brush like the upper half almost in some places. Um, that just gives a little, like, depth to the overall thing. Yeah. Right? Check out this behavior on this paint. So this is the dark net, and it says, for best results, a few layers on black. Yeah. Um, so I put this one on black and it kind of reflects a little bit more of the reflection in the dark net paint But I put this one on gray and it's reddish. It's like almost, you know, it's the same exact paint. That's what all this is. Is that stuff? Yeah Thanks again, uh, have really appreciate you sticking around yeah. hanging around and contributing as always man like and there, I've, I've given you new, enough love. I still can't give enough. I appreciate you so much. Yeah Ditto that Oh my god. So this could be just because, yeah, there's some, it may not be mixed fully, but I can even look in the paint, like there's definitely like a warm element to it. Yeah, no, I scratch it and throw it down every, yep. like, no, that's, yeah, so that's the it, way too. it comes off. Yep. And that's the way it goes on. So when it's, um, yeah, these, this one has a mixing ball in it. You have to make sure these are like really well mixed. You okay. gotta shake the shit out of these things. Um, I mean, that's true with all this paint, but these especially. Um, I mean, they have a ball inside this. Like, mm -hmm. anything that has one included, that's like a giveaway of, like, shake the crap out of it. Got it. But yeah, like, just a single coat, it's just the coverage is thin. So, it's lighter than it normally would be, so it's a little more, like, uh, it's, it's less dense. Like, the paint, this paint going on here, yeah. like, um, so the the like darkness it's basically like not very saturated yeah. saturation level is just low but if you kept adding to it it would eventually get that it's shade. gonna darken down and everything but when you do it straight on black and actually I should put this on camera so people actually know what I'm talking about so this is the same the same paint worn applied both in here on this black model and then on this gray one all these like lighter almost brown or reddish 
brown colors, the same thing. So you can just see the immediate difference depending on what your primer color or base color is. Like it's gonna change what goes next for yeah. sure. And a lot of times this just isn't enough yet. Like you gotta keep doing layers of this for it to start to come through. Yeah. That's also true for the most part. Which and like, will do. And different paints have different saturation levels. Like some are very, very saturated. Like the color just hangs in there. Um, I didn't bring any, but I use I use um, Daler Rowney Artist inks that come in this glass bottle with a dropper, and it's like an ink consistency. It's super thin, but it's like so fully saturated with color. Um, it's almost like never transparent. So like whatever you put it on, like almost instantly takes on that, that like purple or brown shade or something. But you can overdo it really easily because of that too. And then other stuff. Um, like especially like the Citadel range, you have, um, let's see, did I even bring any layer paints? Yeah, this is one. So you can see on the bottle they're labeled differently. So there's like a base paint and then a layer paint. The layer paints are semi-transparent, so you can sort of see through them. Gotcha. The base paints are more saturated. I don't want to say it's a thickness thing because that's different. They usually are a little thicker, but they're much more saturated with their color. This is an excellent color that Citadel makes, this Mephiston Red. Uh, they're all named after characters or places or things. He's, he's in the game, I guess. Uh, no, I definitely know he is. Um, but this is a great red color for a base. But then, like, this would be the base, and then you'd, you'd have potentially, like, red layer paint that would then go over that, because it's semi-transparent, like, some of this is still going to show through, which is actually what you want. Yeah. Like, if you can make gradients uh, or some, blend some things, gradient. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It, it's it's all gonna look look better. Like if you have real harsh distinctions between your highlights and shadows, sometimes that works. Um, but typically, you want to lean towards like a blending for sure. One other thing that we have coming up is Wednesday. We are launching our, I guess, the first of our consistent chaos and cardboard streams. We're going to be playing Pandemic Legacy Season 2 this Wednesday. And then most likely next Wednesday, we're going to do, do an Arkham Horror card game. So we are trying to expand out the shows that we do. That's really cool. Yeah. Which is, it's insane, I think. It's a, lo it's, a, it's a lot to take on, but yeah, good luck. I also realize I need to edit. So we launched Gloomhaven yesterday. We've got one more in the can that I have to edit very quickly. Do you set endpoints as you go? Do you, like, how do you mark that was a usable take? That was a... What do you mean? Like, do you there's, just there's turn no up takes. unnecessary? We just, we shoot and we play the game. And then, uh, so what we do but is there's we... probably a lot of dead air of decision making, no? Well, I mean, there is, but we're, we try and cover it up. Um, so the editing that we do is... Um, at this point, putting in the graphics. So we, so Gloomhaven is a card-based game. So you play cards, and it has effects that you do. So every round, each person plays two cards. So those are, you know. So then we show that the card fly in, mm -hmm. that you use flies out. The next card flies in, flies out. It's a, it's better than just talking about it from a viewing standpoint. Yeah. It gives you a little bit of production value. Which is what we're all about here. Clearly. So I paint the shittiest scene ever produced. On camera, well, it looks fine. <laughs> I, I, I try to remember that like it's gonna be viewed from up above yeah, bird's yeah, eye yeah. view with very like why am I taking the time to paint the bolts on this fan like oh, perfectly yeah. no so one will, no one will ever right. see that after it's compressed down. <laughs> so the the joke in Warhammer is like, do you paint underneath your model or do you paint behind the bolter, which is the, the standard gun that a lot of them have. Right. And they're usually holding it close to themselves. So it's like, no one's gonna see what is under there. Right. right? Like, you'll know. You, you'd, ha you'd have to take the model apart. Yeah. You have to break it to see. But like, there are the psychopaths out there who like paint all that stuff just knowing. <laughs> or like, do you paint the inside of your vehicles? Yeah. Like the interior that then gets sealed up and you glue it shut? Uh, like, I've seen people do that. 
And honestly, I'm like, hey, man. I respect like, it. Yeah, there's like some sort of mental security that I feel like you get <laughs> out of that that I, I can't deny for other people. It's like, hey, if you want to do that, go for it. Yeah. Um, and for me, it depends on the model. Like, for a character model, like my my space marine lieutenant, like, I'm hitting every little detail on this guy, which he has a lot of. He's very busy. I added on a lot of, like, extra gear and crap. Um, but, like, for standard infantry and regular guys, like, I'm not, I'm not painting the bottoms of their feet. Okay? Right. Like, there's a limit. I have my limits. <laughs> it's kind of like selling a car when you, like... Someone gets in and wants to test drive it, you're like, don't open the glove box. Don't open the glove box. Don't open the glove box. <laughs> Shit! They open the glove box. It comes apart in their hand. Oh, like, oh, oh, damn, that's yeah, new. It's $100, $100 off. <laughs> oh, why did you break that? Yeah. It's like, don't look in the car. Don't look in the, don't look under the gun. Don't look under the gun. Well, like, if someone's picking up your models and, like, looking underneath them also, they're an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> like... And judging you, if someone's like picking stuff up and looking underneath and being like, "You missed a spot, bro," I'd be like, "You can go fuck yourself." Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is where we get crazy. I'm got this vibrant blue. Uh, what do we call it here? Curaco, Curacao, Curacao, Curacao. I totally butchered that. Like Spanish. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, so now we're gonna throw it on it. God, oh, that's fucking bright as hell. There's no going back. Hey, no mistakes. Only happy accidents. Except if you cut your thumb off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably not a happy accident. No, that was a, just an unhappy accident. And you're going to be deformed for life. I, yeah. That's a cool, that's a battle scar. So my, my, my dad actually had the, t the tip of his uh, thumb. <laughs> it happens to a lot of guys, right? Um, I swear, there was a, guy, a family friend of mine growing up. His name was Nine Finger Jack. <laughs> <laughs> like, we all know those guys. Anyway, go ahead. Uh... So you know, I mean, I, so I, I don't remember this, but apparently the the he was trying to fix or take something out of the uh, garbage disposal. Mm. <laughs> good good and, beginning to this story. And my mom turned it on. <laughs> ah, uh, like, like you do. That's okay. You, sur you survived. That your marriage survived that. That's good. Wow. <laughs> I feel like wow. Man. Shout out Bob Ross. Yeah. I feel like um, if. <laughs> if I if I was fixing the garbage disposal and my wife turned the came anywhere in the kitchen, get out! Don't even be <laughs> here. Get out! Of don't even kitchen. look at that switch. Yeah. <laughs> so you you whatever you need to do in the kitchen, you need to do it now. I mean, do you really I, need to do it right now. <laughs> I I mean, so our uh, I mean our kitchen light and our disposal is a foot and a half away from each other. And it's, you know, one of those days if you're just, oh, I'm just, you know, making coffee. I forgot to. I'm just going to flip on the light here. And you're like, oh, geez. Yeah, it can it can totally happen. Oh, for sure. Like, that's not the only one of those stories I've heard. You know? I've heard that happen to other people. This isn't awful. Let me get you guys' thoughts on this one. This is, yeah, no, this is not bad. Doesn't fit with any of the other... Walls, <laughs> yeah. but like I like the way it looks. At least they don't have to all perfectly match necessarily. Um, again, terrain is <laughs> terrain. They're you know they're not going to at all. Warrens. <laughs> so not only do so I was like you know I was thinking mine aren't going to match Warrens, right? Aren't going to match Chris's. Warrens don't even match Warrens. Nope. They're all different. Nope. This is this is an <laughs> experimental place here. But I mean, that's true, like, I was saying this I the other day, that. when we started these, like, this is a big project, like, to do all this terrain. This yeah. is a legitimate project that would take me a few weeks to do. You gotta sink a lot of time into these, especially depending on, like, what level you want to get them. It's like an army. It's like yeah. a Warhammer army. Like, right. all, these, all these individual panels are, yeah. like, an individual infantry model or something. Yeah. And, like, maybe you want to pick out a couple of these wall panels that you really like and spend some time on a few of them to make them look like amazing and those will be like almost your like feature yeah pieces like like if you had a big group of um like in an army or something yeah mm -hmm. but like you'd like to also maintain some level of of a consistent look among all yeah. of them which is important why you prime them all a similar color base coat them all a similar color 
your shades right. can be different and stuff. Like you can mix up highlights and some of those details, but you want to have like broad strokes that yeah. cross most of them as well. Which is what we're doing. Like, yeah. they'll fit. Like all these, even though they are different, like. Before I lose it, Nine Finger Jack is definitely an NPC. <laughs> You'll put him in the game. Absolutely. Maybe that's my next character. I gotta make it like an. Well, the question is, well, I mean, the the real question is, how many fingers does he have? Because he doesn't necessarily nine. have to have nine. Right. Yeah. It's like Little John, but in reality, I'm just a very clever name. Big. Yeah. Yeah. Or is it because he gives people less? Fingers? Yeah. Yeah. He's an enforcer yeah. character. He's a. Uh, they call you Nine Finger Jack. You wanna find out? You want to see the cigar cover? <laughs> I can show you. All right, so this one I did a brown shade just on the gold parts. I like it. Which are good. It's going to take it down. When, so it's still wet, but when this dries, it won't be as shiny. Can you do that to one side on here? Because that's the only thing I'm kind of coping with is like. It gives it some depth. The shine is a little bit too much. Yeah. But that, I see exactly how that's going to hit. All of it? Yeah. Sure. This is like magic watching it come together. <laughs> I don't even know. This is just so much. I'm allowed to judge myself. You guys aren't allowed to judge you. Just paint. Keep your head down and paint. I'm not judging. The beatings will continue until morale improves. So I'm gonna do a, a brown shade on this like thing in the middle. And then maybe like on the edges or something, and then do a just a straight black one elsewhere. It'll actually like differentiate this just a little bit. Reflective stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The color shift. Yeah, I'm still. It's still new to me. Um, I mean, even just you know doing some metallic parts on this stuff to really kind of get it to, you know, pop, pop out. out. Yep. Yeah. You got Your mini's got to pop. You got to make them pop. But that requires struggling through the ugly phase. Yeah. Ugh. Gross. Again, the, the only time anyone is ever going to see these close up is when Warren takes his social media photo right, right before the <laughs> stream. <laughs> I'm trying to take a I'm trying to take um, some every time that there's a terrain, just so we can use it in future posts. It's hard to remember. I'm, I'm very skilled about in the same way I take selfies that hide my real weight. I'm very skillful <laughs> about taking artistic photos that hide flaws in details, guys. So <laughs> don't worry about that. I will put all of our collective best feet forward. I mean, there's some tricks to like hide mistakes for sure. Um, like weathering or like battle damage. Type of effects are a good way to like add a little realism, but also cover any like highlighting mistakes you've made, mm -hmm. because they just like rust and stuff. Yeah, and like chipping and let's see if I can get. I have some going on with this guy. So uh, you this can see on like weird. his boot there. You see, it's like clear uh, no, and like gotta shake it. white. You gotta shake it. Yep, but it'll go on and become purple, like Taylor Swift. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> what music wins out in the future? We were talking about this in the car. What, like, it's all cyclical. Retro 80s synth wave is having a resurgence. What kind of music in 2185? Uh, trance. Yeah, half, I think trance kind of works. Do you, do you, so do you think it's all AI based at that point, too? Do you think we, there's any artists we're anymore? We're getting into it. So, yeah, so like your Neuralink knows the frequencies you find. Uh, appealing. appealing, and it just kind of algorithmically generates tones that you're looking for. But I think there's some, and, and then it judges you. You only like three chords, <laughs> you like G, E, and you're like, 
Here are the Beatles. Just sit on them and shut Like up. a brand new, randomly gen... No, it wouldn't be random, but like intelligently generated yeah. music. For yeah. Procedural. Procedurally generated music. Procedurally generated. Uh, the character I created, Herbs, is basically... I guess at that point he'd be considered like a Luddite. He's like all into like... Dude, there's this classical artist I love. He was really popular back in the about 150 years ago. His name was Drake. You guys, <laughs> you should just listen to the <laughs> to the nuance and the subtleties he applies to his as, as, masterful music. As Aaron is trying to sell you drugs, <laughs> Herb is just trying to like. You gotta listen to this. You gotta listen to this. It's got a vinyl that he puts on in the store, and everyone's what the fuck is that? <laughs> what are these scratches? <laughs> Some some form of like droning music, have I agree? Trance is probably the winner, but I feel like just the in San Francisco twenty one eighty five. Just the ambient noise is trance music. I feel like like rhythmic fucking. Oh, like just drum. the sound of the city. The sound of the city is trans music. Like EDM. Yeah. Like my favorite sample is the homeless guy pooping. <laughs> 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 it's just like oh, that's every. Beautiful. <laughs> that's. It's a popular 20, track. It's 2019. It'd be like Demolition Man, where uh, <laughs> we're listening to show tunes. Oh yeah. <laughs> Oscar my wiener. Oh yeah, commercials. So like, <laughs> Herbs is like the Sandra Bullock of Demolition Man, where she collects all the retro stuff from the 20th century. Yeah. Nice. It's like, you guys know yeah. they used to wipe their ass with toilet paper. Like, just <laughs> she gets all the saying up. wrongs. <laughs> Sorry, sayings wrong. You could take this job and shovel it. I remember that. I love that movie. Yeah, that's such a that's I, I still Snipes. think that's where we're going, man. If you if you were to talk about going to win the restaurant wars. <laughs> I love bold predictions. The franchise wars? <laughs> yes, I love and that is a bold prediction. I respect it. We're going to Taco Bell? Oh yeah, they're the only restaurant left. <laughs> they won the franchise wars. The franchise wars. <laughs> I wonder if people died during the franchise wars. Oh, absolutely. Look at what's happening with what Chick-fil-A and and Popeyes. No. What's, what's happening? Popeyes now? just released a chicken sandwich and like there's mad rushes everywhere. If you just hashtag Popeyes oh my God. in Twitter or Instagram, you'll get a whole bunch of memes. It's amazing. Popeyes made chicken sandwich and people are going nuts. Meanwhile, the Amazon is burning. <laughs> <laughs> this is where we are. I'm not saying, I mean, it's not a judgment, just this is where we are. And we are printing plastic little pieces. <laughs> I see, you know, so... so um, <laughs> PLA is um, it's a plant-based plastic, and is that what the three D printer yeah. uses? And it will deteriorate and and break down. It will go back to the earth. Yeah, that's good. The paint we're putting on it to seal it in. I don't know that. Is acrylic stuff? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, well, at least they're nature. small. We'll reclaim all. It's not like a like a massive requirement in actual plastic. Mm -hmm. They're miniatures. I'm I, I'm getting a vision here, Chris. I'm going to finish this with this uh, blue raspberry yeah. and ask you to dark wash it to take away some of the gloss. I think it'll look fucking cool. Sure. Yeah, so I only, I only use high gloss in certain situations or I'll, I'll actually put a gloss coat down before I do other certain things to it, like uh, because that it gives it like a super smooth coating, mm -hmm. obviously, so much so that it's reflective. Um, that can be really good <clears throat> if you put everything in a clear coat or gloss coat first, and then do a shade. It'll run off the smooth, like larger plates, and into the recesses, so it can accentuate your shading. Um, I also do it before I do any transfers or decals because um, the smoother the original surface is, the better it Decals. sticks to it. Fuck oh. that. That's a level of detail I don't <laughs> care to do. Oh, I love them. They're great. <laughs> like on this guy, he's got several. He's got one on both knee pad and one on both shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> it's typical for my Marines. You can see that there's one on his right knee, his left knee, uh, and then both shoulder pads have transfer on them as well. Uh, I love the 
smoking, just kind of focus in on something. <laughs> it's usually music or a video game. But e I feel like even if I was smoking and I was doing this, I'd be like, fuck this. Oh, no. get, it would just ruin the experience no. for me. Dude, every... What was Bill Hicks' quote? He was like, if you think drugs haven't done any good for us, it's like go home and burn all your records and all your music and everything, all the music that's improved your life over the years because all those musicians, real fucking high on drugs. <laughs> Classic. What did he? Yeah. I, I, he's one of those comedians I found like college. He has this really good skit about advertisers. Like, oh yeah, what he's doing is going after the. Uh, he was like advertising. He was like super woke before that became a thing. Yeah. Him and George Carlin. Yeah. George Carlin at a certain point stopped being funny. He was just like just get on about uh, angry Carlin. rants yeah. that you would you would find humorous because you otherwise you'd get upset and have to cry. Right. <laughs> right. You can't do anything but laugh. It's like yeah. So for this, like, I'm washing this one, Warren. I'm not, like, going over literally every edge. I'm, like, just going on, like, the creases and stuff. Yeah. Because I don't want to, like, totally diminish any highlights that have happened. Um, so I'm just, like, going in between things. And, like, on these big flat panels, I'm trying to avoid going over the edges of them. Um, is that too? So, like, even though, like, washing and shading, you could just hit everything universally, and that's fine. You can also be a little more targeted. Um, save yourself some trouble. But yeah, washing or shading stuff, it's the same thing, at least the way I use it. It's like so, it's uh, so gratifying. The word, like the hardest thing is edge highlighting, and there's no shortcut. Like you can dry brush you're, and you're stuff. In, you're committing. But for like things that go past what a, what you would, could do with dry brushing, like when you want to get, you just want to hit like the fine edges on certain things, especially like smaller details of a model. There's just no, there's no cheats. You just have to concentrate, be careful, um, try not to make mistakes, and yeah, and unfortunately that's just how it is. Um, but with with washing and dry brushing, there's a lot of shortcuts that are valid. Um, and they're all tools in the toolbox. Okay, here we go. What do the really wealthy do for leisure in 2185? Are they hunting humans? They go off the world. most dangerous hey, game. Hey, spoiler alert. We're going to veer away from that one. <laughs> what else do they do? <laughs> oh, so that's true. Okay. <laughs> My prediction. What did you say? Hunt humans? The yeah. most dangerous game? Well, they, I, they, I, I am wealthy in this, and, well, i probably going to hunt some humans. <laughs> Maybe they hunt ab humans and synthetic humans instead. Bounty hunting is a real thing uh, in 21. Well, basically, anything you want to pay someone to do, you will find a market for. Um... Yeah, with the complete, not complete collapse, but the only people that can afford justice are really just wealthy people. Um, you will have someone wrong you and, you know. <laughs> uh, what else? What's, is there a sport? There's a sport, right? I Isn't there like a Quidditch major real sport? thing? Did it finally I got get... a sport. I what's, got a sport. I don't want to okay. reveal. Okay, yeah, yeah. All right, that's fine. I remember you mentioned something. Quidditch. It's not, it's, it, better, it's, it better not it's, be Quidditch. It's on the ground credit Quidditch where you run around on a broom. <laughs> it's the one that made it. Um, I played that at summer camp. <laughs> broom ball? Field Quidditch. Uh, it's really depressing looking at my stuff and then looking over, <laughs> over there. Throw this in front of the camera there. Mark that up. I'm really proud of that guy. Uh, never mind. It doesn't look as cool as it does in real life. <laughs> yeah. Damn it! I mean, well, let's just wait. This is a start. So we are. I would say this is a. They're two different colors. This is here. a promising, ugly phase. Where yeah. You could be like, there's potential here. I was gonna ask you to watch just that as well. Keep your vision locked in. Like, don't second guess yourself. And also, like anything you do with these can be fixed or adjusted or altered. Right, because yep. like you can paint over everything, especially when you're airbrushing. Those those layers are so thin, so thin that like if you mess up, 
just spray right over top of it. Like, it's that simple. So, I, I mean, I've been just as guilty as anyone as having that, like, crippling self-doubt with stuff like this, right? It happens. You're just like, this yeah. sucks and I can't do anything about it. What the hell? But it's like, no, just forget all that. That, that like, that self-talk is useless. And it's like, if you don't like it, just keep working on it. Yep. Would you augment your pet? What? Would you go fully droid pet or would you give your dog, like... Well, I mean, infrared if, eyes. So my, uh, <laughs> I would just, you oh, know, I would definitely. I of my two dogs, it would have been nice to just have the good dog live longer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would do it just for like for that. Like I, I would like replace things I that don't happen, know, organs or injuries or something. Uh, actually, uh, how is medical uh, care in 2085? How is is cancer a thing in San Francisco? That's a good question. Um, Wow, Guys that's a really good around. question. UCSF. Can I go to the ER? Well, my understanding of medical things is like, um, if you need it done, you know a medic, get it done. You're right. Uh, like a, like a sur well, surgeon almost. I mean, because like you're, you mean, medic. yeah, you're at that point. You are getting in there and doing like, I'm tweaking cellular myself. Cellular stuff, right? Yeah. So, so any abnormal cells, which is what cancer is, you can just fix or get rid of. And replace with you just better need cash cells. or some contact in like the underground or something. I guess that's a good question. I don't for it. remember. Like you, but it makes sense that you would because there are many detect classes, right? stuff. Is there like a healing class? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's doc. But in mass, we're detecting things earlier, right? Like this right. is abnormal. Right. This is abnormal. I'm sure insurance companies love being able to get a detailed list of <laughs> shitty things you eat that led to your heart condition. Yeah, it's like is AIDS. This is yeah. Do we even care? If AIDS is like eradicated by then. AIDS? Yeah. Has it evolved? Probably. Yeah. Are we still debating vaccines in the future? <laughs> <laughs> is that still a problem? Well, I mean. Probably. I mean, Probably. If, if you're getting, you know, a neural link implanted in your head that serves you ads. Who knows what kind of yeah <laughs> weird agenda-based messaging you're getting. Is Fox News still a thing, right? You know, or is it the only thing? The it is, the it, it won the, the media wars. Fox News <laughs> the is the wars. only thing. But only Fox and Friends, or they're sitting on the, <laughs> on the low couch in short skirts. And it's just like, that's it. What? Or, or to be like, Deadspin is the only one who made it. Somehow. Now they're the voice for everyone. Buzzfeed, like Buzzfeed is the voice yeah, of reason yeah. in the world. Yeah, Buzzfeed is the last <laughs> news outlet. Top five reasons you'll die today. <laughs> <laughs> Neuralink disasters. You've. Do you have a Neuralink? You're probably going to get cancer. Doctors hate him for having a new Neuralink. Wow, that's kind of cool. This one is only on black, right? It must be applied over black undercoat. Yeah, okay. I'm going to try it. <laughs> you don't tell me how to live. I have tried it, <laughs> and it, they are. It doesn't work. They're like you're just gonna waste paint. Yeah. Oh my, gosh. oh my god. So 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 fr a friend of mine posted. You know he's a uh, he posts a lot of inspirational memes because he's trying to trying to make some some movies and stuff. But it's you know it's one of those things. It's like he the quote was telling telling me it can't be done is is not about my limitations, it's about yours. Yeah. And I was like, you can't bicycle to the moon. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm just like... Yeah, that motivational <laughs> stuff is like, yeah. cool, but... I get the sentiment. Yeah. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> the advice I'm giving you is mistakes that I've already made. <laughs> but go ahead and make them again. No, 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 Sometimes no. it's the only way to learn. You're more than welcome to touch that furnace. Mm-hmm. Just consider all regulations a polite suggestion. Okay, so I'm doing a I'm doing a purple shade on this thing. 
so as to re hopefully retain some of the original colors and just like complement it and not like override it with just like a black shade that's just going to darken everything. Um, so once it's dry, it'll also bring down the like pretty extreme gloss on this thing. But you had, you have two colors on here. There's like a purple and a teal, right? Yeah. So it's hard to tell when it's still wet, but we'll give it a couple. Half the battle is watching paint dry. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's why you do. That's why you work on so many different pieces. Yeah. Um, so in uh, in Carbon twenty one eighty five, which we are playing when September eighth eighth. Whew, that is a busy busy week. Yeah, you guys. September seventh, we are doing a Nord Games open house. Watsonville, right? Yeah. Um, September 8th, we are playing 2185. Then we've got uh, Natural One, Chaos Agents. Yeah, that's four, four straight days. Five straight days. Yeah. Five straight days alive. Hell yeah. Pretty great. You guys will be busy. That's the way, yeah, that's the way it's done. The, the, the struggle, or well, the... the the march to seven days. Well, yeah, I mean, I mean, so company-wise, I would love to, um, you know, get some more partnerships and sponsors to actually pay us money, um, so that we can hire an editor, because that is going to be our uh, our big roadblock. Yeah, it's a lot of time, right? Yeah. You know, we're trying to do as much as we can, you know, live. Yeah. Um, but it's also one of those things where, you know, that's somebody dedicated to switching something live as opposed to just hitting record and stream. Right. And like having a director almost. Yeah. I mean, tip. Fly at it. Yeah. So typically, board games are kind of set it, forget it. So we, you know, start all the all the different records, and then just go, and then when it's done, sync them all up and put them together. We used to do like we used to do Gloomhaven's live. We would switch them live. Um, so it, you know, it basically it bypassed. I mean, it saved you about an hour of editing. So. Yeah. Um, or basically real time so it might save you three hours but you have to spend that on the day so it didn't save you any time anywhere it just transferred when that time was spent I mean if you're producing a live stream I'd say that's save time in um, kind of killing two birds with one stone and not having to edit edit because I mean, switching yeah. you're just doing optimized shots for yeah for these guys yeah. right. I edited could something. use a Patreon. Um, we are <laughs> trying to figure out that um, trying to figure out you know percentages and everything right. So if it's if Patreon takes less than Twitch, do we want to push people to there? Because you guys get more value for your donations, and we, you know, make more money. Or is it better to be on Twitch because it's live and interactive, and you're right there? Mm -hmm. It's a hard, hard thing. Man, the mic, the what a shift in the economy, or like yeah. just. Well, I mean, so as 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 we continue to grow and continue to add content, the whole goal is to get. You know, sponsors that pay us money, <laughs> or really, you know, a thousand people giving us five dollars, as Today's opposed to free. five people giving us a thousand. I really love using my turbo do turbo <laughs> dork Curacao <laughs> paint on my uh, Citadel <laughs> brushes. Together, the combination is excellent. <laughs> Give us free stuff. I don't know. I'm seeing the results that I'm doing over here, and that combo is not. Uh, <laughs> apparently, there's another element to it. Skill. 
Or or uh, giving a damn. <laughs> yeah. Caring. Caring, Caring yeah. is a big one. Caring makes a difference. I've kind of reached the kind of, like, oh, I'm in the zone now. Like, I'm yeah. flowing with stuff. Okay, it still has to do Oh, I didn't do this now. side at all. I keep going. I just keep switching up from what I'm doing, too. Yeah, it's called Hobby ADD. <laughs> I have it. I usually have a couple projects going. It's like, oh, I'm going to be printing these uh, walls. Oh, no, I'm going to go do something else right now. I'm like, while I have this paint out and useful, is there anything I can hit with it? Yeah, exactly. That's what That's definitely part of it, especially with airbrushing. Like, the pot you have active going. Um, like, oh, is there anything else I can spray this color? Otherwise, it's... Um, I mean, you can salvage some of that paint, but a lot of it's like once you, once it enters the airbrush, it's like, it's gone. I feel like it. If, it almost feels like blood to me. Like once it hits the air, it's like it's got a limited amount of time. Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. Um, I mean, you can dump like thinned paint back into its original pot, but not in all cases. Um, I like to use it while it's while it's like out and ready. Um, but also at the same time, like if you're waiting for stuff to dry and you're still feeling it, like you put that stuff to wait and do that, and then you like grab the next thing you're on. Also, I, I get in the mood to do different things at different times. Sometimes I'm like, I just feel like base coating stuff by hand. Yeah. Yeah, it's maybe not the most efficient thing for like what I, I'm working on, but sometimes that's just what I want to do. Um, as someone who actually enjoys this. Right? <laughs> like, yeah, let's preface that first. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this type of painting is not for everyone. I'm not trying to convince people that it is. Um, you're either like into painting, being creative, and creating something, and pushing around color and dealing with all the bullshit that this entails, or maybe you're not. Or maybe you just like doing things. It's about like just getting things churned out. It's about like producing mass quantities yeah. of something that look pretty good. Yeah. And I get that. I totally get that. That's, that's my. Uh... You know, I need to get all of this stuff done, and I don't want to pay anyone to do it. <laughs> yeah, and I want it to look half decent. Yeah. I don't want it to look terrible. Yeah. Um, it also doesn't have to be, like, display quality, um, which can differ between people, too. Yeah. But. I mean, terrain isn't very... So I, I have not even... A, I mean, I've done some miniature painting, but for the most part, I'm not ready to go into that. Yeah. Because that just... That's a whole extra layer of you know commitment and time and you know so many different steps and layers to it especially with the the role playing ones like each individual mini is very important yeah like they're going to be on the board the entire time like you're looking at them constantly and it's just one that represents you personally yeah. like are you kidding that's like as important as you get that like bypasses even like a warlord in Warhammer, right. who like I'm not identifying. Yeah, with. yeah. it's just yeah, a this is my character. Uh, that I'm gonna a run for once a week. It's a lot of pressure years. to have like a good looking <laughs> mini. You know what I mean? Like that's a lot of pressure to have that thing look good. I don't know that's what so you weird. mean with that. I do with the herbs character, but the yeah. the thing that I relate it closely to is like when you play Fallout, like you you spend five hours easily creating your character. Yeah. Oh right, like, no. a, like a video game <laughs> yeah. RPG. Yeah. I like, totally did not. I was like, no, you just no, like give me random. Did you, did you, no, I didn't do random. I'm just like give me. Yep. Okay, plain. Good enough. Let's you know, go. Good. Go. 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 Yeah. And you spend all that time and like you're staring at the back of their head. Or are you doing it right. in first person view? <laughs> whatever helmet they have on exactly. or something. All right, I'm gonna go wash some brushes. And Is this a good segue stuff. for a break? Yeah. What do you think? I I need one. Yeah. I think um, just a couple minutes. Uh, I don't think we have any uh, any break. Uh, Graphics or anything, so we're just gonna stream. We're so you just get to see, yeah. Right so you get to stare at me. Yep. Hello and welcome back. <laughs> so you know, I don't know who the hell decided you know roses were so great, but like I like dandelions. <laughs> decided to call them weeds, you know. So AMA with Urban Mask, as he paints and talks in Bob Ross style. So if you're still with us, fire away. I got the questions right in front of me. I dislike talking to myself, but I'll do it if I have to. Um, as I paint the cylinders on this pylon. Um, so as I said earlier, um, AC is decided on basically gear uh, and not stock out of any class. So there's going to be a lot of things in the terrain to hide behind, and that's what I'm working on now is kind of like a pillar inside of a scene. 
Um, got some other things here. These are actually kind of coming together pretty nice. Pretty well. Thomas has got his Gloomhaven stuff, but it's mixed in with our Cyber Mech scene. Um, how are you looking forward to your DMing, Warren? I am nervous about it because I will easily be the most novice person at the table DMing for all these RPG veterans, but I got a good group of people around me. The thing that I'm nervous about is like, are they gonna try to fuck with me during the stream? Uh, are they gonna try, like all my characters I have to create stats for because I don't know, Thomas just might attack somebody randomly. Like I just wanna prepare for those things. Um, I've got a, I feel like a decent story lined up, um, and it should be fun. At, at the very end of it, did I have fun? Did they have fun? Did you guys have fun watching? And uh, that's what I'm preparing for. That, yeah, I mean, I do, as a DM, you do have the power to fight back. My, the character that I love that I created is dying. I'm gonna just create an earthquake, everyone dies. Game over, screw you. That's what you get for messing with the DM. Um, but I don't want to play like that. Uh, just, I just, I just want to um, make it fair for everybody. As soon as I walk outside, Apple Maps was rolling past. Had my Nat One shirt on. Uh, send us the coordinates, the lat longitude. We'll see if uh, Apple Maps has you standing outside your house half with the uh, the Nat One shirt on. That'd be pretty funny. Google Maps has this. Uh, Website with like a bunch of people randomly doing weird stuff as the Google Maps things comes by, and it's like a direct link. I don't, I don't have the link in front of me, but whatever. Just be prepared for two hours of not playing. That is that's standard chaos agents. Uh, the last session we did last week, I, I was watching playback. It was like thirty minutes of D and D, two and a half hours of like dick jokes and pop culture references. Right, that's. If, if that wasn't the case, I wouldn't feel comfortable DMing with these guys, playing with these guys, um, which is largely why I enjoy coming here and hanging out with the crew. Bo, Amy, Thomas, Aaron, uh, James, Aubrey, everybody is amazing, and the community is amazing too, you guys. The Discord is like, I like, I like reading uh, and looking at some of the memes in the Discord. Like, you guys are super fun. There's a lot of creepy shit on Google Maps, that is true. There was a story on, uh, probably about five, six years ago, um, where uh, Google Maps drove by this house and there's an image of like a three-year-old girl lying face down on the concrete, um, hanging off the curb into the street partially in front of a house. Uh, so a news crew showed up to the house and they were like, what the fuck is going on with this? Like, is there a story here? And they knock on the door and the mom is basically like, yeah, she does that. <laughs> Her daughter just like plays dead in random places and it causes stir. I thought that was pretty funny. Uh, probably pretty morbid. <laughs> what is the thing that got you most excited about Carbon? Very curious about it. The thing that got me excited about, so we had the option to play. I, I The thing that got me wanting to dive into it is is the fact that it's brand new. Um, I like to play and I hate kind of rules lawyering in a way and like people have really crazy communities. We're looking at a different tabletop game to play and obviously Shadowrun comes to mind. Shadowrun's got a huge community behind it and the fear of messing something up in my DMing and having a whole bunch of people commenting or um, telling me how I played it wrong or this attribute and stat should have been used was like in the back of my mind. So uh, with Carbon, there was an opportunity to start from zero and learn with the rest of the community, learn from everybody else's homebrews, learn from everybody's mistakes, um, and also to join their Discord and ask the creators and the and the people who invented this RPG, what happens and what about this aspect of this world? Like, do animals have augmentations, right? The, the, the creator of the Carbon had a pretty decent Q&A that I encourage you guys to go to Dragon Turtle Games' YouTube channel and check out um, that answer a lot of these kind of theoretical, hypothetical, in-world questions. Um, and I, I've, I mean, I'm happy that Cyberpunk is kind of like hitting the masses now. I, I was kind of like an EVE Online person, so um, a little bit more sci-fi than fantasy, but it's it's all the same game. It's all in the mind. But Carbon got me excited, mostly because um, it was an opportunity to start something new from scratch and not feel like I was a beginner in it. 
Um, but the world that they've built, the more I started reading about it, the more I started seeing things um, posted about it, the Kickstarter got me really excited about it. Um, the more I started to um, understand the play style of it, I was like, I can wrap my head around this. I don't want to call it easy. I'm sure it's like there's a lot of, uh, it's, it's like going to the gym, right? You can make it as hard as, or as easy as you want. Um, but it, it felt like something that I could gravitate to, whereas other cyberpunk style games were like really hard to, to, to get into as a beginner. Lucifer, when I first DM, I didn't have anything prepared. I just went with an idea. The first thing that happened was a rogue almost one-shotted wizard with a hand crossbow. <laughs> My goal is to make sure Thomas and Amy and, and, and Aaron and Tiana don't screw with the world I created that much. Like, as long as we're having fun and they're not, like, following this random NPC home to, to like, do some menial task, I'll be happy. Um, I think I've got... Oh, can we, can we get a tavern? <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll start a tavern. We'll, uh, we'll start, we'll be land barons. We'll start forcing people to pay rent. <laughs> I'll mention something obscure, then we'll wind up in a dungeon as a result of <laughs> decision after decision. Um, yeah, that's that's kind of the... the. So Chris, sitting right here, is an amazing painter, is also helping me um, plan engagements so that I don't accidentally kill people, but also like helping me create characters that kind of seem like they fit in the world. Even though uh, there are some NPCs in the... Uh, Dragon Turtle games book. I, I do just like to create my own because that's kind of half the fun to me. Um, and with these guys, I gave them a set amount of one longs. Like, all right, whatever you spend this amount of money on is what your character starts in terms of inventory. And every time I do that exercise for myself, I never have enough money. I'm like, <laughs> damn, I really want this thing. And I don't know if that's like an attribute at this point, or am I like, there's something critical that you guys need that you can't buy. We'll see. First seen in Ukador when Boo took a shite twice, cleanly <laughs> and efficiently. I'm all right with that. Uh, any, <sighs> you know, if I've got engagements planned so it doesn't get boring or things low, but if we spend the first hour and a half role playing, I wouldn't be super happy. <laughs> I have no expectations other than our people having fun and enjoying themselves. That is my goal. Nice. Carlin being based on 5 edition SRD certainly helps. Almost people nowadays have played 5th edition. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty true. Uh, I need a hacker NPC ideas, you know, the half ways is hand. Yeah, so we... Oh, so, oh, yeah. I w oh, that's right. I'm not going to do that. So I was, Amy and I were originally going to be twin hackers, where we were both hackers. Um, but I was going to use, just use uh, today's terminology completely wrong. Like, I was going to be, like, hacking something and be like, oh, my God, there's too many TCPs in the IPs. <laughs> we got to do something about this. Someone like Hef works in security and works in IT. That that would be, I guess, only person who would be like, ah, cringe would probably be Hef. Everyone else would be like, oh, my God, that sounds amazing. <laughs> like, they totally did the backstory. It's like, uh, as Omnicus said, like, 5e, you can kind of, if you've played 5e, Carbon kind of makes... Carbon is like a really easy transition for you. And even though they don't have those classes, um, you, you see the one-to-one -one translation. Like the, the scoundrel, I'd imagine, is basically like a rogue, right? Like they have the same sort of disengage yeah. attributes and stuff like that. And the uh, Diamo is like kind of your, your barbarian fighter almost, right? The difference being like ranged attacks is a, is a thing. Um, but yeah, I'm still learning. I'm still reading. I'm still doing this stuff. But it's I, I'm I, I gravitated towards it because I didn't want people screaming at me. Uh, you did this wrong. This didn't be that. Yeah. How wh how is the what's the ETA on like the the physical books from the Kickstarter? That's a good question. I'm I'm in there. <laughs> <laughs> Dragon Turtle Games, right? Yeah, I'm in their Discord almost every day asking people like people are posting. Got my core rule book and like where are you? I'm in Germany. Like fuck. Uh, so when I see people posting that they've received their core rulebook in California, that's when I'll start to like start to sweat. Uh, we should have it before. There's a good chance we'll have it before September 8th. I'm keeping my fingers crossed that we will. 
Um, I've got five uh, books and a core rule book and a cities book and a DM screen in this Kickstarter kit. Um, so we'll have a lot of things to, to give away, but to also play with aesthetically um, on stream. But they are shipping. They, they just posted in Reddit slash uh, Discord that they've gotten their shipments. The books are bound. They're sending out stuff. Um, it cost them, I think, they someone said in the Discord, like $50,000 to ship all their their books wow. and stuff to all the people who have ordered. And uh, the one of the founders, uh, this, the creators, was talking about the different regions that have, like, backed versus other regions. It's like Germany is, like, the biggest European country that they're shipping to. It's like, uh, is that a... Is that a sign of things to come? Are the Germans mm -hmm. making a resurgence here and they're planning for the cyberpunk, inevitable cyberpunk future? Should I be concerned? Or, I mean, you know, it's like Essen is the world's biggest, you know, board game convention. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, in Essen, Germany. So, we'll have a, a reports from the ground as Ezra is going. Ooh. Dude, that looks great. That looks so good. Oh, yeah. That, like, that gradient... It's like yeah. rust. It's like backwards rust. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's super cool. Yeah, that's um, this guy. The blue. Yeah, that's awesome. Hell yeah. Put that on some uh, other stuff. Dude, do you want to see our cup board? No place for mugs. Always a place for mugs. Arguing about mugs. I will order QNC <laughs> flask. Oh, we have merch. Yeah, Mike's Mike's got the stuff going. Super fun. The low, the flat the flats look so good. They do. Actually, the coasters. The coasters are, are like freaking professional amazing. quality like coasters. I feel bad. I don't have a drink of high enough esteem to sit on that. <laughs> it's like why would someone put so much craftsmanship into a coaster? It's just Mike. Boomy. Oh, Lisa's on. Lisa! Oh, yeah? Right. Thanks for subbing. Thanks for watching. Lisa is a friend of the show. Of she's, the show. she's played Carbon? She has played Carbon, Chris's wife. Nice. Um, and also a playtester to help me make sure I don't accidentally kill you guys. <laughs> also helping us with character creation as well. Yeah, she's amazing at that. Super creative. Awesome. Welcome. Uh, actually, I have some of her Warhammer army here. She's the Death Guard player. So this crazy, <laughs> this crazy drone that's spitting out like human remains behind it, and all these Poxwalker zombies—they're all hers. I help paint them, but that's the army she runs. That are these like crazy, gross plague marines? Of course, of course. If you knew her, that makes sense. So this one I put some of that blue on too, just to like add a little color into some of these, mm -hmm. just on like the top part. Yeah, with that I could see like, like a neon like billboard above it or something kind yep. of. Yeah. Yeah. So that like something shining on it, or if there's like, if you want like a something to be like a light source, you can like dry brush a color around it, um, and that that has like a whole series of techniques that you can do too. It's called object source lighting or mm -hmm. OSL, when something looks like it's emitting light. Yeah. Uh, so it's like hitting other surfaces in different ways and like... Oh, yeah, like if I like, wanted this guy to be glowing, to look I would like, it like was glowing. brush so, out. Yeah, so there'd be like a color dry brush around, near it, and then maybe the piece itself that is glowing might be like a really bright version of that color, or white even, because it's like, it's emitting, but then the color is like hitting yeah. other stuff. Um, I should have brought a model where I have some of that going on. I unfortunately didn't today. But like plasma rifle type of effects and stuff could work in carbon for sure. Like that stuff that's yeah. common in 40k where it's uh, like you have yeah. like an energy weapon of some kind. Like that's super common. So on one of the uh, the guns that we've we've made we, we added that effect too. Oh yeah. Um, yep. The phase pistol yep. or whatever the right. KHMA gun they have. That's right. Is that different than just uh, the 21st century pistol? So there, most of the weapons in there are bio-locked, which means like you, 
you know, when you go and you kill and you loot a body, you can't pick up somebody else's gun and use it. Um, it's actually illegal to use a non bio lock gun, which means all the gangsters are using bio lock guns. Um, and which is why people still use revolvers and like right. regular ballistic guns versus like phase shifting sort of things. So um, but it, you can pay to have a bio lock taken off of a weapon that you salvage. Gotcha. So, uh, Lucifer has a good question. Will there be inspiration? Is, uh, it, is it that close to the D and D five E rule set where yes advantage and disadvantage? Yes, when we play, I played exactly with inspiration, and I played with the Nord Games luck deck, which came in handy oh, a few times. Oh, nice! Yeah, I don't. How is? Oh, it? that's fun. How did that happen? Or the, oh, when not. you roll the twenties and the ones. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's that's what that was. Yep. Okay. Gotcha. So it is just it's real five E. Yep. We didn't have inspiration because we didn't have donations, but I did give them advantage and disadvantage on certain things just as it played out. Um, that was my practice on godding things into action. How do you guys feel about inspiration? Actually, in the chat, it's a good question for you guys. Just to what what do you like? What don't you like? Oh, there's paint on my pants. <laughs> <laughs> no, there isn't. Good. Uh, is there anything you would want to see changed or not want to see changed? If changes were going to happen. I feel like you should be forced to use yours. Like yeah. you, sh you shouldn't. Oh, you can't DM, hold as yours. A, as the DM. Yeah, as the DM, you can't hold yours until the prime moment to fuck somebody over. Like you have to. If you force someone to make, if you have to make like a skill check, you have to use it. Um. Yeah, I mean, I can, I can definitely see that. Um. Because I know when, when I get it, I'm also in the thing of. When am I? When are we going to get to this? Right. Yeah. So there is that whole. <laughs> when you're planning a session, it's like okay. So if we get donations, how how are how are the uh, players going to use it? Right. So is it going to be social interactions where they're trying to get information from people, um, and you know, or is it just straight up combat? You know. So I think you know we definitely. We're not going to have, in D&D, we don't have combat every session because some, you know, that's not the solution to everything. It's so foreign to me. <laughs> mm -hmm. The, and I'm, I agree I'm slow, with... I'm slowly picking that up. As, <laughs> as we've played more sessions, which we're only like two or three in at this point, as a new player, I'm like, oh, I don't have to open fire in every room I walk in. <laughs> <laughs> but I've been trained. Yeah. So the you know the last uh, couple episodes of Chaos Agents we've had, you know they've talked to the bad people or the people that are in these rooms, this dungeon that they're in, and both times they've made a deal with somebody. You know we'll go take care of your problem if you you know give us passage. Eventually you have to. They had to take care of a problem. <laughs> Which was great because they thought they were going to kill vampires, and they ended up killing actors or thespians. The world is a better from, place from, for from the island of Thespos, as, <laughs> as Bo said. Uh, it does make it a little easier, half, but like you don't know when you're going to need it for that, right? When we 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 have no idea how long this campaign, not this engagement is going to be, right? When we were fighting the flesh goblin and then all of a sudden <laughs> Gollum. Gollum. <laughs> we're fighting the fleshlight and we we're fighting <laughs> the flesh golem. Um, and then Thomas comes out with three more actors out of the back room. We're like, "What the fuck?" Right? So, yeah. we don't know when we should and shouldn't use it. And our our we we tend to hold on to it until it puts somebody in a bad spot because then we have to go back to town just to remove the cursed item from Ruckus's hand. <laughs> that was so, so pretty much, um, um, pretty much, the the dungeon of the Mad Mage is from the book. So there are, you know, the the vampires are actors. Um, they did have a breakup, um, and. You know the, the the flesh golem was created by like a, a wizard on the third or fourth floor, mm. and was lost. 
and the Haria just happened to look like its master. Oh, so shoot. that's how she got the golem. Part of that too is like I don't know if Thomas made this up or like this is a really random thing to put into a dungeon crawl. Yeah, like oh, actors God. pretending to be vampires. Like this is totally a Thomas creation because I don't know that I didn't it's, know that that was in the yeah, book. Yeah, right out of the book. Um, <laughs> I can say I am going to get us out of this as quickly as I can because <laughs> I hate running a dungeon crawl because every every level of this dungeon is. Uh, like, there's 50 or 60 rooms. Each one has a different encounter. So, like, there might be a throne throne room with a you know with a a helmet on the ground. <laughs> yeah. What do you do? Or, or you know, you have to describe. Uh, you know, there's webs on the ceiling. And there's, yeah. You know, you see a giant body of a something up ahead. Just it's it's too much to remember. That's why I don't. I'm not going to pretend like I remember it when you're talking. Like, if I, I visualize it as much as you describe it, but as soon as I lose my footing, I'm like, nope, someone else better, better be paying attention. <laughs> yeah. So, and that's, um, um, you know, and, and, and that, that's what really happened last Tuesday is that I had to try and keep track of all of this stuff that was, you know, potentially happening. Yeah. Um, and the bits and the, you know, and watch the chat as it was zooming past. So... I'd imagine, too, that, like, so with some of the encounters in Carbon, they have uh, the planned missions. Is like, when your characters enter a room, the NPCs do this. That the, I'm right. sure they have in the Dungeon of yeah. the Mad Mage. Yeah. It's like, yeah, that could be interpreted as a hostile action. Do I? <laughs> in, yeah. Oh, right, yeah. And then knowing us, you're like, do I want to get into this part with them? Because, you know... Tiana's got a heart of gold. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez, that that's a cliffhanger. So, so they had uh, one of the bad guys. They captured him, and we're going to give him to some to uh, bugbear crime crime gang. To a bad gang. Yeah. Um, but Uzo decides to to kill the guy. However, he had he had sixty hit points. Why? <laughs> <laughs> so you were just like slowly, slowly killing him as everyone watched you do it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, what what movie is that from? Where uh, Snatch? Where they try to kill mm. Bullet to Tony tries to kill Boris the Bullet Dodger. And it took him like four different <laughs> shots. Yeah, it's like for fuck's sake. That yeah, that's so yeah. that was uh, so Andraste watching. Yeah, Goody Two Shoes. Yeah, she's she doesn't like you slowly killing somebody who had given up. I mean, yeah. I mean, I mean, I understand. Let's let the bugbear eat him alive then. That's <laughs> a Aaron. Should let him pick. Got that quote. Oh, that, yeah. I'm petty in this guy. Uh, this bugbear is, or this guy's freshly uneaten testicles. <laughs> oh, yeah. While we were integri- interrogating him, I had him by the balls. And I, I, I didn't intend to pop him. <laughs> <literally>. <laughs> you made me. Yeah. <laughs> That's how you get the truth out of anybody. Grab and squeeze. It's like, oops. Or, oh, okay, man. so I'm doing some very like rudimentary object source lighting on this, just with dry brushing and washes, because um, I'm trying to keep it using like the simple techniques today. This has to dry still. Did you see that? Yeah, that's the. Goal. Oh yeah, nice. Yeah. So it's like brighter in the middle, but the color is like spread out to the other areas. Um, let's see if I can get this. This has got a dry still. Dude, this, I, I got a favorite, this blue raspberry. But something like this. And this isn't the greatest job I've ever done on OSL. Uh, it's a lot easier with an airbrush. You can get that like really smooth, like fake lighting. Uh, but you can do it without an airbrush. Um, I think it like it does the job. And this is just on like this random skull servitor thing, which is also, also very 40K, I must add. <laughs> um, 
these like skulls mounted in this little shrine thing. Yeah. But like anything that you want to like emit light, you can you can kind of cheat that effect with dry brushing and stuff. Mm -hmm. You just have to. I had to mix white with the blue to just go like higher in the middle. But um, but I mean that I was just doing that as you guys were just talking here. You know. Yeah. That, that's like a quick way to do it. And if you spend more time, you can do more more edge highlighting and get brighter on the edges in here, and then it'll like really pop out. And if you go like pure white on the edges or in the skull, like it'll really accentuate that. But yeah, it's already drying, you can kind of tell. Yeah, I mean, washes and dry brushing will get you get you a long ways, especially with terrain. With with dry brushing, I feel like I can do it earlier. With washing, I have to get past the ugly point in yes. order to see the rewards of it. Yeah. Yep. It's like, no, I'm over this. It needs to look good now. <laughs> Instant gratification. Not what this provides. <laughs> Delayed gratification. That's where it's at. I'm just painting some treasure chests. Oh, sweet. That looks really good. Cool. A little. Might be a little wet. Oh, you got good brush work. Like, you can hit all these details and stay inside the lines and whatnot. Yeah. They're, uh, they're almost all, like, raised. Yep. You know, I didn't do, like, the inside. But it's trim. Portion of it, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. hard. Trim is tough. Um, and I was telling Warren this at some point, like, these, these characters he had made, like yeah. as far as miniatures go, they're pretty small. They're very detailed, and they're not um, the grooves and cuts in them and all the recesses are not like hyper um, accentuated. Yeah. Where like if you look, like for a comparison, let me clear out some of these. Like this guy, and we'll use um, a similar model that's just like riddled with um, depth and detail. Like these zombies, like the their recesses go like really far into the model. The sculpt is like very dynamic. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like um, when you put a shade in, it goes pretty deep. But then like these guys, like the sculpting on it is is fairly shallow. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like if you look at his the suit and everything, like yeah, there's creases in the fabric and stuff, but it's pretty slight. Yeah. There's not a ton of there's not a ton of depth in the actual sculpt for stuff to live in. Even in this little tiny horror demon, like he's got all these extra things coming off his back that you can put shade underneath. Like it's pretty um, defined, right? I guess definition. Um, so like these are challenging. These are challenging minis to paint. Yeah, like this is these are tough to start with. The D and D minis They're, less so. Yeah, are more challenging. It feels like than the. Uh, Warhammer only because of the look at the scale difference. Yeah, between this marine, oh, who's, yeah. who's a big marine, and then these guys are side by side right here, and like you're talking, even this guy's covered with all kinds of extra bits and stuff I put on him. But like a normal marine, where most people start, you know, in my world is a lot of big flat panels, yeah. really well defined. It's that an, can be modularly assembled. Too. Yeah, it's an easier, yeah. much easier thing to paint. Um, and also these zombies, the pox walkers, like if you, you have to look close, but like, see all the little detail on his back? Oh, the boils oh, yeah. and the swords. If you yeah, drop geez. a shade in there, it, it just like fills all that in, and then you do a dry brush over the top, and like everything is speaking to you yeah. all of a sudden. Whereas like this guy with his like smooth jacket and smooth head and everything, mm -hmm. like it's harder to make it look good. It really is. Like, so these are not easy ones to begin with. Um, I feel like that's why I, Space Marines are a good starting place for a lot of 40k players because they're one of the easier ones to paint. But that's how it is. Some these models are a tough place to start with, but the, this terrain is pretty good though. And the 3D print job does a good job. I don't know. The hef is pretty critical, uh, Thomas. You, you <laughs> missed the bottom there, dude. Oh yeah, totally unpainted bottom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but like I said, right? Like if someone. It's like, oh, cool treasure chest, bro. And then they pick it up and they're like, hey, you missed the bottom. It's like, yeah, you know what? Fuck, Fuck you. you. <laughs> it's it's, it's uh, bolted to the floor. You can't, you can't pick it up. I'm telling you right now, I do not paint the bottom of my bases. See that? 
Oh, it's kind of funny. So we had, uh, you know, we had our minis painted uh, when we yeah, got them. Dick, he says. <laughs> um, and the the person that painted them, based them. You know, did you know like the flock and stuff on, yeah. on the base. Yep. I'm like, hey, can you take those off and paint it a solid color? Because we need it on camera to be able to color, kind of code the base of who is who. Mm. Oh, I see. So, so our uh, PC minis should have solid color bases. Or, I mean, it can be a, you know, a, doesn't have to be like flat solid, but. And then. But they're color coded. Matches. Like mean something. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then matches like the overlay. Yep. On the on the actors or mm. the cast or the players. Gotcha. I say actors. Some of some of our cast are actors. Like what? Oh, actors. I'm not an actor. I consider this acting for sure. Uh, yeah, maybe. The role playing part mm -hmm. for sure. And it does, it's kind of like a cheating sort of thing. It's like yeah, I get to act without acting. No one's judging me for this performance. <laughs> really? <laughs> Bo is always judging. <laughs> no, he's not. Bo, the guy with 20 different accents who can cry at the drop of a hat, who's like on his way to a, a, an EGOT. Like, no, you don't get to judge me, Bo. That was awesome. Yeah, he is. All right. Is there anything I can help you guys with? Yes. Can you wash this? I really fucking love it. Blue raspberry is my new favorite color. Um, I've just got a bunch of crap over here, so if you want to take it and do anything to it. Okay. I'm gonna, can I, can I then pass you the stuff that I've done here and I'll take Thomas's and add accents like I've been doing? Yeah. Sure. Yeah, just pile them up somewhere, just let me know where. I'll put these right here. So Thomas, does it, this, this like, hatch work, does that mean it's like, head stops uh, for yes. completion or something? Yeah, yeah, that's a failed print. Man, I kind of like the way they look though, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah. Like, Still usable in my mind. Yeah, like this. This is just like cabling now. Yeah. You know what I mean? This yeah. is just like. I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. So this, this apparently, when I first saw it, was like, I guess I saw it on this piece right here, and I was like, oh, I don't know. I kind of like the way that looks. Actually, it looks like extra machiny for what this thing is. Yeah. It's like crazy. Stuff yeah, you know where where you're actually seeing in the wall, and it's just built with a lattice. I, yeah, material. I, I get that now, but for someone who's like as unfamiliar with 3D printing as yeah. I am, um, I didn't even notice that. Hey, happy accidents, right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. That was, that was a that was an 18-hour print that died with an hour left. Oh wow! I went. <sighs> so what? Wow. Okay. So you got 17 hours in. Yeah. And like, what does that mean if you if it doesn't get to completion though? Uh, start over. Really? All of it? Yeah. Or just, you mean this piece? Yeah. Is it so, 18 hours for one of these? Uh, no, so that that would be a plate with about nine of them. Okay. Mm. So, oh, so nine of them were ruined, or were yeah. not complete? Yeah, actually there, there are, are different, if you notice, there are different heights. Right. So it failed multiple times. I kind of like that there are different heights, though. Um, I don't know. I look, I'm into it. I, I believe I figured out what was causing the printer to do that, so... Yeah, that's a, you know, you get a printer and it works great, and then slowly over time, you know, the cheap can, you know, cheap parts and stuff wear out. But I'm not, I'm not going to buy an eight hundred dollar printer. I'm going to buy a two hundred dollar printer. And then, you know, six months in, put two hundred dollars worth of replacement parts onto it. <laughs> So yeah, whatever you feel like on these um, would help it pop more. I don't, I don't know how to even say it. Uh, your face. What's what's top of the line three D? I mean, top of the line three D printing probably exists on like the Warner Brothers lot. But like, what it's yeah, I mean, what's so commercial like, home use? What does NASA of the line? use at the ISS? Because yeah. they print tools and yeah. recycle them, don't they? Yeah. So even you know, like thirty two ten, the studio up in San Rafael. They've got a industrial size 3D printer where they can make entire like prop firearms hmm. wow. on a run. Um, you know, it's a huge machine rather than a, a small type of thing. Um, I've seen ones that use metal. Yeah, um, they have metal. They've got carbon fiber. 
Oh, that's I great. can actually run carbon fiber through mine. Oh, wow. Really? Yeah. Jeez. What would you make out of that? Anything that anything. small wouldn't, like, what would be the point of making carbon fiber that small? Right? Like, the usefulness of carbon fiber to me comes in, like, table size. Like a frame of something. Yeah. Something strong and light. Mm -hmm. It'd be pretty big, right? The only thing, that, like, the, probably the biggest thing made of carbon fiber I've owned is a hockey stick and a bike frame. Like a bike. Right? Yeah. That was like yeah. my first interaction when carbon fiber came out however many years ago that was. <laughs> I had a remote controlled car that had a carbon fiber chassis. There you go. But yeah, it'd have to be bigger than these for it to really make a difference, right? Yeah. Carbon fiber hoods in New York City when I was in high school was like oh, yeah. the thing. Yeah. Oh, and it, it made even more of a thing because you saw the threads through the hood. Like, oh. now, now you can just wrap it in the printed carbon fiber. <laughs> yeah. right? You can just fake it. I mean, you just want the appearance, right? Right. It's just about the That's image. Trying to do. It doesn't matter if it just actually trying to get the checks, man. I don't need it. I need all the things. You don't need it to actually be lighter. <laughs> so this, I didn't even, I haven't washed this yet, Warren. I just did a, a silver, dry brush over the purple. Yeah. To take the edges out, and yeah. it's still metallic, right? So yep. it brightens that up, and then the shade is gonna. Um, Add contrast to that too, but that's so. Do you have one that has this purple without uh, that I haven't touched yet? Like, do you have any other? Not on the edges. I'm probably going to do a different edge one real soon. That's fine. This should show it. Oh, this one will show it. So this is one. Okay. Hopefully, you guys in the stream actually give a shit about this. But okay, so this one. Over here, on your right, is this blue that Warren's been using with a shade applied to it. So the recesses have darkened down a little bit, the blue is still there, no highlights yet. This one is kind of the opposite. The blue's on and a highlight's been applied, but no wash. So you can see the edges have come out, it's a little shinier and pops a little more. Now what I'm going to do is just, you know, complete these, so do whatever, you know, step is missing. So this one I'll highlight and bring up, and this one I'll put a shade on and bring it down a little bit. Um, and then, for me, that's you know that's a pretty good start to where these are at. But that's the difference. So this is like blue with the highlight, blue with the shade. I do like this blue color too. It's not too bright. It's not like a. It. I feel like it fits perfectly with each each one of these paints has like a specific calling and I feel like this that blue is like the perfect interior right yeah. like it's it's the yep. stylish blue whereas like the afterburner and the electrum are perfect for the androids we painted yep yeah I agree these color these paints are definitely still like a um, experiment for me I've only used um, just a little bit Oh, jeez. It's just a lot, of, a lot of work. We've been doing this for three hours, eh? Thanks so much for tuning in with us on your Saturday evening, yes. wherever you are. Oh, yeah. Much appreciated. Thank you so much for the bits and the inspiration. There's so much. I was worried. It's like, Thomas, what, what happens if we like go through all the things on stream? <laughs> like, well, do you have more minis you need to paint? There's, there's, no. uh, there's a, there's a never-ending supply of unpainted terrain. Yes, the backlog um, never ceases. 1 a.m., bro. I, I, I know those. I know the feels of strolling around randomly through Twitch at 1 a.m. I know that feeling. <laughs> yeah. that, that's a, that's kind of a good feeling, especially when you find somewhere that you can sit. Yeah. I, uh... I, I was up until, like, 2.30 in the morning on Thursday watching Glow on Netflix. <laughs> uh, I, it's in my watch queue. Is it really good? It's. I mean, it's 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 good. It's a show. <laughs> Every time it's like, do you, what do you want to watch something new? And I see it, and I'm like, not today. I mean, it's. I mean, it's it's good. I mean, the acting is just. It's really well done. Okay, these are a bunch of not done pieces. 
And then I started watching Mindhunter. I love that's, Mindhunter. That's like, ugh, do I really want to watch this, though, at so midnight? <laughs> you, know, after, you know, this, this serial killer talks so about dark. how he's like, disembowels people like mm. yeah that's, that's i mean david fincher is such an awesome director though that show was great uh i just got finished watching the family like the documentary on how the manson the church no oh that other one that, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah the church, Which church? In, in the, christian, oh. the christian church yeah it has the heart and the basically all these lobbyists all these politicians by the balls and how the national prayer breakfast and it's like oh, mm. this big opt-in device basically when you're a part of the family you've been approved by this one guy co or something like your political career is basically set it's like an insiders group in mm -hmm. washington right that's religious based yep it's kind of out front to be so insider for so long oh man this is a new hbo show about with john goodman that looks pretty good which one is it uh i forget it's like the fabulous something or other, but it's about a religious family and oh. they're like actually a religious crime family, pretty much, like cultish slash you know TV ministry, but then they're also gangsters, something like that. I haven't seen it, therefore I can't describe it well. Oh, yeah, dude. So that's like shade and highlight. I'm trying to, it's it's at that point where it's like, what do you do? Do I risk turning the fan a different color? Because <laughs> it, it, it's done. It's it's done. It, it's done. Nope. Yeah, we're good. It's we're done. good with that one. I should start putting. There's enough of these that you can just be like, this one's done. Let's do the next one. Ooh, this is good. Oof. Lucifer stayed up to watch us, and we we play at seven or four a.m. his time. Wow, that's a, a definitely that's a, that's impressive. And we appreciate every minute of it, man. Holy cow! It's the last thing I stayed up to. I think I stayed up to watch like a launch like a few years ago. Like the work. Yeah, well, it was, but it wasn't. It wasn't even. I I kind of was pissed about it because it was like I'm not even working this event. Like I might as well have said yes, right? <laughs> and gotten credit for it. Yeah. God, I, last thing I like purposely stayed up specifically to watch that was like airing live was probably like World Cup like years ago, like when it was like in the middle of the night on East Coast time. Yeah. Fucking. I, I, it's cool you mentioned Mindhunter because I barely Sorry. watch what? any TV or anything. That's like one of the very few shows I've actually seen a couple episodes of. Do you play Frostpunk uh, on Steam? Because I play it too. Is that what you're talking for, Lucifer? Let me know. Sorry. Didn't mean to interrupt. No, but I love that game. I don't have anything to say. I've never succeeded going past like 25 days keeping people alive, <laughs> which is pretty depressing. Like, ah, I'm pretty shitty. Um, but Frostpunk is a really cool game. Basically, instead of superheating, like ice reclaims the earth, and you have the last steampunk colony, and you gotta keep people alive, and salvage <laughs> nice. other people. That's cool. Like. <laughs> so, so reality. Do you think we're heading towards an ice age? Um, I mean, eventually, because, sure. Yeah, eventually, cy maybe. cycles. It'll get so warm that it'll, it'll just happen. Right? It'll flip. Yeah. I don't know. City skyline is good, but um, I can I don't I don't know how to cheat in Frostpunk. I, you can definitely cheat in City Skylines. Like, and you build something, you're like, oh, I'm gonna stay to the stock rules of the game, and then all of a sudden, like, you don't have enough electricity in one place, or you can't run water somewhere, and you're just like, now nah, fuck this. They made this game too hard. There was a what was the in one of the early civilizations, maybe Civ three. There was just a, you just turn on cheat mode. Like, you could just turn on and off cheat mode. Yeah. Oh, and really? it just, but it really skewed, like, life. Because you think, oh, I, I can just cheat at everything, you know? <laughs> kind of breaks the game. Yeah, I mean, it, it literally, like, I would think, oh, I can, I don't have to worry about, you know, going to work. I can just hit cheat mode. <laughs> I wish yeah. my doppelganger shows up. <laughs> like, okay, no, that's not gonna work. 
I played the first city. What was it? Uh, Sim? Not, not, what is that? City Sim? Sim City. Sim City? Sim City. Oh, yeah. Oh, um, yeah. I mean, I was like, yes, it's a legendary game. All I did was cause massive damage. <laughs> that was... It's I like think, Godzilla coming Yeah. You start Earthquake. Disasters? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, you were, you were that kid? Yeah. We had that in our, like, elementary school class, like, on the computer. Yeah. You know, back when it was, like, a big deal to have a computer in the classroom. <laughs> and, uh... Oh, yeah, there was always that kid who... So we used to take turns taking care of the town. It was, like... <laughs> that, was, that was the deal. And, um... <laughs> and he'd be like... Who had it last? How come, like, the whole western side of town is obliterated? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, because like, somebody's going in and, like, turning on, like, super hard mode. And, you know? You could just activate disasters. Uh, yeah. You could just make you them just happen. Will them in, yeah. So it's like, Dave! Dave Mooney, you screwed up. <laughs> Steam Workshop uh, cheats add-ons. Yeah, I play this game, Democracy 3, where it's... Just kind of like click around, but like policies have implications to one group or the other. It's, it's basically impossible to win. It's one of those Frostpunk spreadsheet simulator sort of games that you try to do, but there are like people have created policies that just like impact you for it, like utopia mode, and like everyone's nice. happy now. No one wants to assassinate the president anymore. Democracy 3. Hef, we got a lot in common, man. Alright. These are looking pretty. I don't know if you want to do that. What do I want to do? Do you have something that looks like Rust? Uh, not with me. Is any one of these? Would... Um, yeah, the one that I'm using right now is actually, probably is... the best Rust afterburner, but it's like kind of shiny. Yeah, that, that's the problem is that those are too metallic because normally Rust yeah. is dull this like this, is, like yeah. on the bottom. So I didn't bring this paint with me, but um... Yeah, because that's the thing. Rust is in. Um, yeah. It doesn't have like those metallic, like flakes in them. Part of me too is like I need this to be able to be seen on camera. So I think this is how it looks when it goes on pure black on the pillar column. But you could you could put if you put a the milne oil or black wash on that or the or what is it? It's like gold, right? Yeah. So yeah. use the brown one instead. Um, it'll actually take it down. It might look pretty good once you're done with that. So okay. put this on after. Um, I have a, I mixed a small amount of this. Yeah. All right. If you want to try that after. Yeah. So you just, just take it down. It'll be too loud by itself, probably. Strategy game, Warframe. Yeah, I don't, ah, dude, I play Stellaris all the time. Oh, I love that game. How many times you play all these games? <laughs> You're not That's married. Question. Yeah. You yes. don't have a girlfriend. Yeah. Hey, hey now, shots fired. <laughs> but hey, that's okay. It's, it's true. Speaking of that, what happened to Kuma the rat? Dude, so I'm like, this is this this was my plan, right? Like the next time somebody pulls out Kuma, like I was gonna stab him and throw him overboard of the ship. Be like, he's gone now. We don't need to deal with him anymore. Fuck off. And it, it, is is Kumara enough of a different I was so <laughs> upset when he came out with the sword, and that was the name. I was like, what are you doing? Bro? And it gives you an Eldritch Blast? Fuck you. <laughs> so I, so on those on those uh, apprentice cards that I have, that was, you know, it's like I couldn't name the sword like Jake. Yeah. You know, so I took put, chose one of the other Jake names on it. Was, I guess I could have named it Jake. <laughs> So, so Steve. Eve Online. So they have these, the Titans are like the biggest games on, like the biggest ships that you can get. It takes you a while to skill into and it costs a, a fuck ton. Bill. And the first Titan that they brought into fruition in Eve Online, they named Steve. That's so <laughs> The community named Steve. Shippy McShip face. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking people. Of course, right? <laughs> don't, don't, give, don't give the masses the opportunity to name anything. Because it will end up stupid. Face. I, I loved it too. They're like, hey, you get to choose a name and name. We've decided to name it The Explorer. <laughs> Is that what happened with the boat? Yeah. Yeah, of course. Evolve. But they had a, um, um, what is it? They had a, it had a submarine with it. So the submarine was named Bodie McBoat Face. That's pretty great. They're like, yeah, you internet broke this, but. Yeah, we'll throw you a bone. You guys are too stupid. 
You guys are too silly. Every single time they have Time Man of the Year, there's like this random <laughs> pop culture villain that surfaces to the top ten because someone starts a massive campaign to vote this person in. Mm. I think like last year was, I don't know, I think like last year was like Bill Cosby or something. It was pretty bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, what? Like, what? Yeah, okay. Trolls you guys you guys trolled a president into office. Like good job. Like no, can we have nothing now, please? Right. Can we there's nothing sacred anymore? This is as a joke tactic, you guys realize. It's become like a serious tactic now. <laughs> mm-hmm. Actually this this color looks pretty cool. We'll see what happens on it. Cause this is a very dark base. These are uh, pressure plates. Or Gloomhaven. Sorry, I'm not. I'm not doing your carbonate. No, no. I'm stuff. I'm like, can I use that as a mine? Oh yeah, it's a mine for sure. <laughs> There's so many applications for that. I'm just working on these, right? Yes. Okay. Whatever you feel like. Okay. You, you can do or should be done to those. Perfect. Do it. <laughs> Yeah, it's a, ooh. it's a lot of painting. What time is it? It is 4.30. Yeah. Damn! Time flies. It's man. getting almost lunchtime or dinner time. Depending on where you are. I'm right here, Warren. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many. So there are, I mean, there are cardboard tokens for these things, but... Because we stream and, you know, we need to be able to see things, it's nice to be able to have something that's 3D to represent the game board. And I have a 3D printer, so it's like... You think, I have uh, it, therefore I must use it. And uh, 2185, you think we got a... Fifth element, oh yeah, chicken. You know the microwave. Yeah. You put in an empty bowl with two dots, and out <laughs> pops this fully cooked herb roasted chicken. <laughs> Maybe. Can we at least get tofu to taste like something? Maybe, maybe that's what happens in the future. Like want, we I'll, can texturize tofu to be like, this is a T-bone steak now. Well, so so in the year twenty one eighty five, we must have been through the uh, the re scandal reveal of what Impossible Meat really is. Right, <laughs> the 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 vegetarian yeah. one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've, tr I've tried that stuff. It's actually I, it's human. <laughs> home, it's, human homeless people from like I some think so. Asia Pacific uh, countries. Honestly, yeah. I think so. They're like, oh, it's plant based. And they're like, ha 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 ha. It's actually not. <laughs> we know it comes from our plant where we process <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> our human plant. <laughs> No, uh, the thing too, it's like, yeah, the Impossible Burger isn't any better for you. In fact, it's worse for you than... It's just not an animal product. Right. Ezra would uh, mess with the... I mean, he would get the Impossible Burger because he likes it with bacon. <laughs> and then they'd be like, he'd order and they would say, are you sure? Yeah. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> and then, like, five minutes later, they'd come around the corner to us sitting there and like, are you sure you want bacon on this? The cook in the back was like, go back and check. I don't think they know yeah. what they're talking about. But apparently they are making impossible bacon. Actual. Again, it's got to be people. It's soil. <laughs> it's soil and green. We all know it is. Just deal with it. Just so you know, when you think you're saving the planet by eating impossible meat, it's people burger. <laughs> Just remember that. Hey, yeah. it's in our. We're, we're slowly going back to the cave. It's how much time do you give until we have straight up televised Roman gladiator thing? I don't think. I think we'll see it in our lifetime. You think so? Yep. To the death. To the death. Two men mutually assured destruction to the death. I think it's going to take place on some prison, on well, like an Indian reservation uh, where there's like. Do you think? Um, I mean, uh, are we talking just America, or are we talking the globe? Uh, in America, in okay. America. 
Dude, technically a victimless crime, That's man. Probably Two people already. enter into a duel. Oh, 100% it's happened. Like, they don't they have those, like, smokers in prisons? Yeah, they do. In Thailand, you can fight for your freedom in a tournament. <laughs> in blood sport? Kumite. In a Muay Thai tournament. Jesus. Yep. That, if people are fighting, fight until you can't go anymore, basically. If you well, want like, your freedom, you, you can... You can reduce your sentence. Like, they'll let you out early if you... Like, if, if you become a full-time fighter, train, and, like, go through, the, like, there's documentaries on it. It's pretty wild. It's crazy. Yeah, like, that's what we need. Like, a good combat fighter back on the street. Right? <laughs> now they're, like, yeah. who's yeah. proven. Professionally trained. <laughs> I know, right? Seattle, yeah, has the mutual combat law where you can legally fight, right? Like, duels, congressional members not too long ago would have duels, yeah. gunfights, right? Like, we're, we're, we're going back to that. <laughs> Because it's entertaining. I, you know what? The first one, Morbid Curiosity, I'd pay for that pay per view. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. Or are you going to have to work it? <laughs> That's not brand safe. We're not going to carry that content <laughs> at all. Are you kidding me? Unless, unless yeah, there's Logan, a ridiculous yeah, amount Paul, of money. You can That's gonna have be in a boxing league. match. Oh, yeah. That's a live league thing. Oh, man. Bear traps, spike traps. You have bear traps? Sweet. Right now I am printing a giant toad. Because, uh... Because you need that. Yes. Gotta Druid's have, wild shape. Gotta have that. Mm. Kelly. Into the shape of a chicken. No, so they have, like, they, they have official miniatures. They have got a giant frog. But it's a, it's the same size as a human, whereas the giant toad in fifth edition is like, like a, a large, yeah, monster sized. Yeah, because I guess a a gigantic toad could be the size of a cat, right? Yeah, for like right what it is normally. Yeah. Now, if you're gonna have a giant toad, <laughs> that should it should be scary to people. I definitely don't think it's a pickup line. You want to you want to see my printed giant toad? <laughs> Just like you want to see my giant toad. Yeah, it's covered in warts. <laughs> <laughs> well, is that a pickup line or just a uh, a disclosure? <laughs> Paints are cool. Is that the color shift one? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, even just kind of the metallic aspect of it. Like, they're just... They do a lot of unusual colors for uh, metallic paints. Mm -hmm. Like, metallic paints have been around, but their stuff is, is pretty off the chain. Um, like, even without the color shifting aspect of it, they just make interesting metallic colors. Usually metallic colors are like gold, silver, oh, yeah. you're done. Or, and some variation of those. But they got all kinds of craziness going on. Oof. Ooh, that's no good. <laughs> it's, it's an interesting study. I mean, but I wouldn't obsess with it. It, de it depends. Like, what is the stance, yeah? Is the obsession is World War? How do we don't stop, romanticize. How it, do we stop this from ever happening again? Or yeah, like how did they get this level of like I don't know power efficiency and power? Yeah, I, mean, I, I love watching like History World War Channel. II stuff. Yeah. Hell yeah, World War II in color on Netflix is like one of the greatest like World War II series I've ever seen. It's just color recolorized footage. Yeah, it's great. There's all kinds of stuff I'd never heard of. Like you, you thought you've like heard it all. There's so yeah. many movies and everything. Like there was stuff going on that would just like blew my mind. Just crazy projects. The thing that I like when I started like uh, getting back into. Well, I go into waves with like what what am I fascinated with now? And like I got reacquainted with like World War II. Found out like the Russians were so brutal. 
Oh yeah. <laughs> they, and then to, later towards the war, they started issuing no prisoner orders. Yeah, so the crazy. Germans were trying to get on the Western Front to yeah. surrender oh, to yeah. Americans versus fight Russians. Yeah, it was nuts. <laughs> it got out of control at, in late in the war there. Yeah, and it was all it was all seen as like we're doing this because you guys started this. Yeah, basically. And like every time the Red Army would like cross another town and like basically liberate it back it would just be like another some other atrocity mm -hmm. so they just yeah. got more and more pissed the more they just kept that counterattack going yeah by the time they got to berlin it was like a fury that would have been crazy like a citizen just like living in the city this whole time like you think oh, you're safe yeah. at the heart of germany and all of a sudden <laughs> the red army comes rampaging in like with a vengeance like oh my god that's why you don't elect people like hitler because he doomed everyone to apocalypse at the end, he was just like, well, you know, it's all about me still. Yeah, and yeah. all my citizens and everything, I built these crazy bunkers for and stuff, but you're all doomed because of me, because I started it with everyone. It's a cool guy. <laughs> Charismatic leaders are dangerous. The appeasement of it, it's like, no, he'll just... I, I, he went into Poland. That's okay, though. Like, you know, he'll, yeah. stick, he'll stay there. You can take the ball. Yeah. We'll give him, we'll give him that. Does that really belong to anybody, anyway? All right. Yeah, carbon, world governments are basically done, though. Um, police exist to enforce wealthy uh, ethics, but most wealthy people have private security, which are... It was a... Dude. If a cop pulls up behind you or something, you're stupid for pulling over for him. Most cops, too, are <laughs> automated SFPD mechs anyway. Right? Like. I just hit the other uh, that. There's, a, there's an area in Fallout 76 that is, uh, like, just robot police. I just hit that. I think they are. It's the worst game ever. I don't know why. Continue, continue to play. <laughs> That's what I hear. I'm just like, I'm, I'm committed at this point. You know, I need to finish this storyline. It's like they took Fallout 4, stripped the good stuff from it, and said, oh, we're not going to do NPCs. You're all PCs now. Have fun. But. I don't want to talk to anyone. <laughs> I want to play this game in silence by myself. People are awful. Don't <laughs> exactly. want to hear them. That's why I play a video game and I'm not at the bar or anywhere. Where did, is this it? I was playing Apex Legends uh, this morning, actually, and the dude thought it was funny. Is that why you were late? A little bit. No, that was that was. <laughs> um... Dude thought it was funny to have an open mic with like I don't know whether he's got a soundboard that's just blaring porn like oh you know <laughs> the moaning noises but I'm like I'm glad I have headphones on. Still annoying. Mm -hmm. And the annoying part of Apex Legends is that like I can only choose to mute like there's an active mute cue when you're toggling the menu to pick a character but once you're in the game like you can't really mute anybody because that's take like you'd probably die if you take the time out to go into the settings and like mute the specific person. Gotcha. It's yeah, like yeah, this is this is why. It's annoying. This is. So yeah, so I don't I don't have headphones or anything, or like so when I'm playing Fallout, I hear the game audio and that's it. And every once in a while, you know, as another player comes over by me and I see the, like the chat symbol come up and oh, it's like shit. I'm like dude I don't hear you <laughs> I'm not paying attention and then they follow you around trying to like talk to you I'm like hey, just leave me alone not interested I'm playing this game because I want to be alone and not near anyone the division the 2 when it first came out uh, like, then you get groups of people together right um there's a spawn point. You spawn in these like hideout bases because you're like an undercover agent, not an undercover. You're like an activated cell agent, whatever. The one that everyone spawns into, and then you have to leave to enter the world. They people just took two of their characters and they camped them in the door, and you can't. <laughs> like, they didn't make it transfer. So it was like it made it to Kotaku. It was such a big deal. Yeah, that, like two people brought the game to a halt because they blocked. The just because they blocked the door. That's funny. Why? Yeah, that's poor. That's poor de game development. But like, why? <laughs> why would you do that? They're the 
the troll political party. Some people just want to watch the world burn. Yeah. I bought this game to fuck with people. Yep. Man, I mean, some people just, that's what they exist for. <laughs> like, that's their hobby. Fucking with people. It's an art form. I, it's an art form I respect, but I respect the subtlety of it. That's way too, <laughs> yeah, hit you yeah, over yeah. the head with it. Yeah. Yes, I agree. <laughs> I agree. Like, like Russians. <laughs> <laughs> must be Russian hackers. I kind of want to respect dumping. What? They basically digitally leafleted the country and they turned it up. <laughs> what did they really do? They just pumped information into your ecosystem. I know warfare is so boring nowadays. It's like blog posts and fake comments and news sites. <laughs> like, man. Paperwork and lawyers. Super boring. Can you imagine, like, like in Rome, ancient Rome, like, each political, um, uh, like, candidate ha could raise and maintain their own private army? Can you imagine if, like... The, you know, the Ted Cruz army. Yeah, or like, <laughs> like when Trump and Hillary were both running, like, can you imagine if each one had a standing military force that they could use for whatever they wanted? Like, Ugh. I thank God you can't do that anymore. <laughs> My God. Now they just have to be, like, sneaky about it, I guess. You gotta, like, hide your agents in different ways. Or you could murder Seth Rich with QAnon. Joke. Is Absolutely it? 100% fucking Is joke. It? God, I didn't want to kickstart that shit. <laughs> <laughs> Keep that in front of the camera. I'm really proud of that guy. Yeah, these look I don't know. Too. What about, uh, what about, uh, no, I'll, I'll just, <laughs> <laughs> I'll just, no. If never you mind. have to rethink it, <laughs> probably best to leave it alone. Uh, it's, uh, I mean, not a topic I think we want to get into. I mean, it's it's. I mean, really, you know, who? It's the twenty questions. Who hasn't Hillary killed? <laughs> <laughs> At least she doesn't have like tanks rolling around yeah. outside her office or something. Fucking with people is a hobby. I I agree. <laughs> it's I true. agree. It's a pastor. Sometimes on Facebook, I don't even, I, I just know it'll stir conversation. I don't even really want to, let, let alone agree with some of the postings, but it's, it's worth, it's worth watching people eat time, each other. A lot of times it's not. It's just like, oh God, why did I? Yeah, I can't stand that. Why story. did I do this? I should have known better. Yeah, I'm allergic to uh, internet arguments. I just like glaze over and I'm like, eh, I don't know what these people are like. It just doesn't work for me. People get mad about stuff and start fighting. It's like, I don't you're, you're just, you're also hiding behind like an anonymous name. Yeah. I have no idea where any of these people actually are, what context they're coming from. I don't engage with people who are like in the shroud of anonymity. There's no way. I don't do that. I was kind of, I was, uh, I was, uh, I thought it was interesting. To see the, the the grave dancing on David H. Cook that happened after he died. I don't know. Oh, the the Coke brother. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, they're like, thank God, you know, all this stuff is all this like super hyped up grave dancing. I'm like, oh, there goes Frontline. <laughs> <laughs> Brought to you by the David H. Science, you know. Yeah. Science, uh, David H. Cook Science Foundation. But you know, that's fine. You don't need. Science, it's just. Whoa, he, he. I mean, everyone like no one is like pure, good well, or bad, oh, yeah. right? Like people, yeah. I'm. Sh like, what is the famous thing? Like well, course, yeah. Hitler loved dogs. In fact, like, <laughs> no, um, but the the it's like a mass of things agenda setting that you yeah. contribute your money to that I think people took offense to. And I was just like, dude, what are you trying to... He's been... Commerce. It's been so much money He's on cancer a... research. 
But like, yeah, it wasn't exactly altruism. He's trying to find a cure for himself. That sort of, I, you, you've got money and you want to see your uh, perspective enacted, whatever that perspective is. Yeah, you want to have some influence. You want to have influence with it, yeah. If something's bothering you, you make a change. It's a very human emotion. Yep. Wanting to make a difference. Yep. All right. I got to figure out how to get this blade steel out of here. Dude, afterburner's coming through. Chainsaw Charlie's name's Chris. He knows all about everyone has my name game. <laughs> hmm? Okay. Everyone. Oh. Oh, because, yeah, it's the most common goddamn name ever. Um, shit, oh, this is water. Yeah, things exactly have, right? Like, if someone wanted to find out who you were, like, they could piecemeal, and there's enough internet information out there about you, what you do, to piecemeal a profile together about you, right? Like, just saying it's lunchtime or dinner time now at least gives you a time zone. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. like, all right, we're zeroing in, and then they add something, and then we're like zeroing in. Uh, my buddy Nate had a before. This is like kind of on the beginning of the internet. Before internet became like creepy, creepy. Uh, he went to school at NYU, and on a freshman floor, they had a map in the city, and they encouraged students to do celebrity sightings. So they would take a toothpick and they would plug it in and be like, Robert De Niro had a had <laughs> had drinks at this bar at 9 p.m. on a Tuesday or like I saw Dennis Leary eating a croissant here 3 p.m. on a on a Wednesday and then somebody's so, like oh we should put this on the internet no well what happens is at the end of the semester you start getting people's habits oh, and yeah. you're like if you want to catch Robert De Niro be here at Thursday before the drink rush and like sit at this table like you'll be right there that's funny and it's like wow that's kind of scary yeah yep and now that's on the internet. Now that's you yeah. can do that with Google Maps in your pocket, right? I oh, got a, also a little beacon. So there's this. Uh, I think it's History Channel where they're doing this. Uh, it's called Contact about aliens. Mm -hmm. You know, of course oh, it is. Shit. Yeah, Probably Discovery I Channel. I love that shit. Or Nat Geo, but they have a uh, you know a computer that searches through a bunch of information and and ties. Uh, it's basically an SQL database. Anyway, so they uh, they search this database for relational material and you know they're going through and being like okay so there was a, a weird sound on this date let's search for that and it pulls up a whole bunch of Facebook posts and Twitter posts of people that saying do anyone else hear that sound yeah, that's cool and I'm like no that's just like a TV show the government is doing that 24 7 on us what do you mean oh like Oh, like say uh, about like Searching studying, for, yeah, yeah, yeah. like what trending yeah. things are. Yeah, you know, it's like oh, an Alexa in your house. Yeah, you know, nineteen sixty. Oh my God, the government might be listening. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> hey NSA, can you tell me how to make banana bread? <laughs> oh, it's not nearly bright enough. Dude, I was wondering what was gonna happen with this. This is fucking great. <laughs> To the yeah. So how much longer are we gonna do this? That's a good question. <laughs> I feel like we've got enough momentum to go to like eight, but <laughs> that's not probably not healthy. We're killing our average. I'll tell you that. I'm gonna run out of steam in the next hour, probably. We'll finish up on a few. We'll put some of the better ones on display, then call it. Sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hell yeah. It's just taking a chance on colors. I didn't even. This is good stuff to experiment on. Yeah, actually. Um, yeah. The question is, what do I do? I leave some of this here, or do I take some of it back? I, I take the unpainted stuff back. Yeah. Yeah. And work on a little bit of it. Yeah. Or anything that I did, so you can fix it. Oh, my God. Yeah, 
this other stuff isn't. This is blade steel. It's not shiny enough. What are you trying to do? You're trying to like make spikes or something? Yeah. I have a um, I have a pretty bright steel that I brought. You could try this. Well, I wonder if. I mean, yeah, you can give it a shot. Fine. I'll just put it there if you want to use it. Yeah, it's definitely brighter. I don't know what I'm gonna do with the brown and gray stuff, Chris. What do you mean? Uh, I mean, there's definitely an outdoors scene, but. I don't know what to do. Oh. The paint stuff. Give me one as an example. I mean, you can, I mean, there, I, I'm guy. assuming that there's bricks in the future as well. Yeah, there has to be, right? So this thing? Okay. Tudor style. Let's see. This could definitely use a wash or two. Okay. Um, it's a little two-dimensional at the moment. I mean, you can see that the highlights on it, which are okay. They're also a little bright. Um, yeah, let's see. So, I'll try something different with this. Two different emotions happening at the same yeah. time. <laughs> uh, oh, this is great. Oh, this is awful. 2 a.m., still not tired. Not a democracy. I think tonight's going to be a long night for me. So if by the time you wake up and I'm on Discord and you want to play some Stellaris or something, hit me up. I definitely need to figure out what I'm doing wrong with Frostpunk because it's 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 depressing. It's like everyone's gonna die because of me. Are these uh, multiplayer games or? Um, Stellaris is Frostpunk is a single player game. Uh, not Stellaris. Stellaris is Frostpunk is a single player game. Um, we play like the mayor of that small town. And if you don't, like, if people don't die, right, like, people get upset with you and they lose hope and they, like, basically either cast you out or execute you. And one of the execution methods is that they tie you to a post in the town square. Everything is steam-based, and mm -hmm. they just let steam blast you from the ground up. It's like, yeah, that seems cruel and unusual. It seems like Not even if politicians. He's, yeah, that's fair. <laughs> Well, even if he's doing a shitty job, like, you could still put him to use tilling the field or, like, coal mining or something. Like, every hand matters. Yeah. It counts. Oh, my gosh. These were really easy to 3D print. They're not easy to, uh... The spike traps? Paint. Were or you able... Any of it, really. Uh, to sure. try the drone, do you think that? Did you look at the drone file? Um, um, I did not. Okay. Did you get to the stage where you can eat corpses? No. Ah, that is a crucial no. stage. It sounds like. Yeah. So basically, you have two sides, and then like these uh, tiers of like you can enact laws or whatever. I know what the stage he's talking about. Um, I never got to that point. Um, but yeah, the, that's that's progress, right? We we get to progress to the point where we get to eat our dead. Right now, I'm stuck having to bury them, and people take a day off. They waste. And it's like you need to get your impossible burger going. Like yeah, one right. one stage you progress to is like, oh, children get to work now. Sweet, that means more coal comes in to feed the steam. <laughs> and then like a situation comes up where like a parent is like, no, my kid is gonna get hurt. I don't want to send my kids to the coal mines. And you're like, and you're like, listen. Your you're, kid needs to You're go. either on board <laughs> or you're working against it. Yeah, I get to make that decision as a as a, as like a good action. Heresy to me. So I mean so really I mean this sounds like a communist simu simulator. Communism simulator. Or fascism. However you want to look at it. Like you I am enacting things. But that's that's the path, right? Because I can have daily prayer meetings to like inspire people and gain hope or I could have like regimented watchtowers that keep people not committing crimes right like yeah 
the the yeah, it's it's each one has like a weird payoff. Um it's like do you want people to work with their frostbitten limbs till they die or do you want to, you know, amputate and like Preserve. save some people? Yeah. It's like I don't mm. want to make this decision. I don't know. They do. They do make good role play. But I guess I get so immersed in my mind that like each of those decisions weighs on me <laughs> more than it should, knowing that it's just a simulation. I, don't I, I to be fair, <laughs> I was the person who played Age of Empires and StarCraft and got really upset when I lost a Marine. Especially one that, because you used to be able to track how many kills and battles they'd been in. So like, uh, this Marine has seen combat 30 times and is still alive. Hell yeah. Yeah, but they're then born to dead. die. <laughs> and, then he, and then like, I'm keeping that Marine behind the base. Like, yeah, you've seen nah. enough combat. I don't want you to go back out there nah, anymore because you're just he, working on a fixed clock he's now. He's destined <laughs> for a glorious death. Are you kidding? Like, damn. It was worse because Age of Empires gives them like a bonus per like combat. That, like they become grizzled veterans. Right. And it's like I I need you out there. I'm sorry, man, but you let go or else everyone dies. I'm not built for these games. Clearly, you don't have what it takes. <laughs> Okay, so I used a contrast paint on this, which is a paint that's designed to shade and base coat simultaneously. They're sort of new. They were released by Citadel and Games Workshop earlier this year. Mm -hmm. So um, they work pretty good. I don't think it like fully replaces any step or process, but they can be really cool in certain things. So for this one, it's like a leather color. It's this like dark brown. Yeah. So it just like darkens down a lot of the like gold that was in here um, and gives us like this brown sort of metallic color instead uh, that has some depth and like some shade to it and I would do a highlight over this too again like what color highlight some light brown or like a stone color um, I didn't bring it with me but I have I have a couple that are jumping to mind maybe like a bone like an off-white something like mm -hmm. that that's maybe not too light um, like this would probably be too much. It looks like it was what it so you used on here originally, maybe. Yeah. So that's, a that's, little darker than this? Yep, this is like a desert use. sand. Yeah, something like that. So like this desert stone one looks pretty good. Yeah, this one this one would be close to what I'm looking for. Is this guy right here. I you see it's like, like I don't darker. even have oh, okay. I was so like comparing those two? two, I like oh maybe. But this compared one. to those two, yeah. I don't have the sophisticated eye for that. For those palettes, I mean, I'm partially colorblind. I have a very common color blindness that's like apparently like one in twenty males have, yeah, or something like that. I forget what it's called. Um, I don't have to like do anything about I mean, it. You, I just you, have it. You can't see dirty dishes. Right. <laughs> uh, I don't see race. <laughs> um, no, I. Uh, I guess there's certain shades of like brown, green, and purple or something that I don't see. I the last time I took the test was it was decades ago, probably at this point. That's but, crazy. Uh, I know, right? So the, the way I see my own models are probably, and I use a lot yeah, of green and brown. That too. probably yeah. is like gives you. Uh, it's an award-winning uh, 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 yeah disability. Uh, you, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you make choices that people wouldn't normally make. It's a feature. Yeah, not a not bug. a bug. I've never heard that used positively. <laughs> it's not a feature, a feature not oh, a bug. A, yeah. Because usually that's like, oh no, that's an how it's, it's supposed to be designed. It's to fuck you over. Right. Um, when you built see. this like this? Wait, if we if we don't charge people for committing crimes, they're going to commit more crimes. Yeah, that's a feature. All right, Hef, I got a, I got a, well, chat, I got a general question for you guys, right? We're augmenting people. We're basically coming up with Humanity 2.0, what is one feature that you would change about humans and our attributes? I, I'm going to make mm. one change, right? Okay. Maybe we don't breathe and eat out of the same hole, right? We cut down on 50,000 choking deaths a year right there. Boom. That's, that's my first iteration on the human software that so, I would change. So, uh, say breathing oxygen. So government, <laughs> government 
control of that means they're going to put in a feeding tube. No, I would say if you <laughs> or if this ta- was the talking? Matrix and we had to bump out Human 2.0, okay. like given what the learnings that we have right now, what would you change about human? I, I'd cut down on the need for sleep. I'd find some <laughs> way to reduce that. Like, Well, that sounds like we live oh. forever and we never have to sleep. And A more efficient battery <laughs> system, okay. I guess. I don't okay. know. Yeah, sure. Or we didn't have to eat. See, yep. remove eat. the need for sleep. Yeah. Find some way to reduce it. Not make the knee go backwards. I don't know. <laughs> just, I'm just, I'm just spitballing here. I'm just throwing okay. some things okay. out there. How about <laughs> night night sight? That wouldn't. Uh, dark, yeah, yeah. Dark N- vision. Night sight is useful, right? Half of the predators in the animal kingdom yeah. hunt us at night. We can't really see them. Half of the gases we see that will kill us, we can't detect. Matrix style learning. Implants. Boomy says implants. Okay. Would I would I retain there there has to be a trade off with those implants, right? Like I want to speak Russian for a small amount of time, so I use that implant as opposed to installing it and always having it. Cat eyes. You just for aesthetics or like what what not, are we doing not for cat in fifth eyes? edition? Cats don't have dark vision in, in fifth really? edition. Really? And not in fifth edition. For what reason? I don't know. I mean, like some sort of universal translator would be huge. Like, or you know what? Let's get a, let's a just fish. get rid mm-hmm. of language variants. How about that? A unified so language. It's one language. Oh, that's tough. controversial. <laughs> really? What language would it be? Yeah. Well, English, yeah. yeah obviously, of course. Obviously. No, I'm I'm down with like it being let's let's make it Tunisian or yeah. something. Yes. Immunity to disease. That's a good one. But that's 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 too that's the that's cheat mode. Yeah. Pick one. Pick a disease. Uh, flesh eating bacteria. That's a thing now. I mean come on. Can yeah. you that's a hard thing to get by. <laughs> <laughs> it's a really easy thing to be against. <laughs> I'm going out on a limb there. Yep. Uh, I'm going to run on a platform to do away with flesh eating bacteria. It's pretty easy to support. I don't know. What I mean, what if it what what if we scientifically don't know the benefits of flesh eating bacteria? It's got to have some What benefit. if what if it is Are you kidding me? the one thing <laughs> that is keeping um, this planet al- alive? Is it though? I don't know. I haven't. I haven't studied it. <laughs> well, until further notice, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> no more meanies. How do we? How do we decide no more meanies? Right. How do we get that? Yeah, well, you are killed at birth. <laughs> they do. A, they do a, a modeling projection, no, an no, algorithmic just projection. Everyone is killed at birth, ah, okay. and then uh, there are, then there are no more bullies. <laughs> like this kid. Like There's they no read some humans. astrological chart, or they like basically predict the future of this kid. Like, yeah, this kid is probably going to grow up to be a tyrant. We don't need him. Um, um, I would say genetic or uh, hereditary memory. So that, Ooh. like... Um, it just builds on itself? Yeah. That's so so that it reduces the need for, like, learning from scratch as a new human. So, like, you would be born with some inherent instinct or knowledge from... Your previous generation, your parents, or something. But like, can you imagine if you had like the positive knowledge of like ancestors to begin with? Yeah. Um, or just some sort of connection in general. It's like you, you have to start from scratch as a baby. Like that sucks. You but you start would, over each time. You, you would just, also keep I mean, you the just, same prejudices, maybe. Well, so I mean, really, what you're what you're kind of getting at is like doing a oh, uh, shit. Did you get it on yourself? Something's not sealed. Whatever. They got paint on me. It happens. Um, oh, jeez. Yeah, we just we just have replacement bodies that we can just put our consciousness in. That would be human 2.0, right? Yeah. Just like, oh, yeah, it's all, you're going to use this body for a while. But, all right, so this is kind of like the philosophical debate of EVE Online, right? Like, they have the con- – you basically create a human – that can transfer from one body to another so that like they never leave the battlefield. They like respawn on the battlefield yep. with the memory of the previous encounter so that they can like right. constantly advance. And when they train those types of 
soldiers, the first thing they do during uh, training is they like the drill instructor puts a bullet in the soldier's head. So like that you soldier just, just wakes up and is like, yo, you died. Do you remember that? Was that painful? You get used to dying. And the, the, the thought is is like is that are you really you or are you just kind of iterations of imitations of you? Mm. Right. No? Is this too yeah, much no, for no. a five PM stream? No. Right Live, now? die, repeat. Yep. I love them. Edge of tomorrow. tomorrow. Edge of tomorrow. Is that tomorrow? tomorrow? Yeah. Yes. Sweet. Sorry, I used that title. I have, I have such a crush on Emily Blunt from that movie. The War Hero? Like you're right, Hef. Full metal bitch. It, <laughs> it like, uh, yeah, so if you transfer body, your consciousness transfers. Like something, the materials that make it up aren't exactly a one-to-one, -one, right? Like there's some hardware differences, right? right. Even at like a, a micron level. like yeah. You'd have to get used to, you know, like, oh, shit, I've got five-foot arms. <laughs> You know, just as a, you know, in case you happen to get five foot arms in your uh, new body. In your swap? Yeah. Or you're like, uh, you've got like, you've got, you're basically an Adonis, and you're like, I don't want to switch bodies, this one's perfect, but like, your arm is hanging up, I don't care, salvage it. <laughs> Yeah, the chat just got pretty grim dark. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, our, it's I mean, at a certain point too, you just turn turn that body into some sunlight like green, and there. You go. <laughs> yeah, this is what Hep is saying. It's like once people hit get eighty, you yeah. just club them over the head and make make room for the new ones. Oh, what is that? What Logan's run was it like thirty six? Was that done? the cutoff? <laughs> yeah, thirty six. Yeah. Whoops. Yeah, they they're they're not messing around. For the God Emperor, all things. That's right. The Emperor protects. You feeling it? Yeah. Yeah. Me too. Yep. This is the thing. I think. Uh, I think that's gonna do it for uh, for this. We'll take some photos. You want to field any like last minute questions? Will they still? Yes. Yeah. yeah populate those. Uh, we'll put some photos of some of the ones we're more proud of in the Discord. Uh, <laughs> Should be like three, I guess. And then, uh, the treasure yeah. chest is pretty nice. <laughs> we, we weren't supposed to be doing fantasy stuff today. Um, Tell them even tomorrow. That's true. But thanks again for everybody to tune in and hung out with us in chat and and donated bits and inspirations. Really, really appreciate you guys. The community, you guys are amazing. Have yes. Stop it. Oh my god. All right, so that's gonna be. That's good. We're gonna have to do some math now. <laughs> uh, we're gonna start off with some some bits in the boy. Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> oh, because he can uh, uh, have can actually do the math for us and just tell us. No. Well, it's. Good lord. It's. Yeah. Ten. Ten bits. Twenty. Ten inspiration. Twenty. Five hundred. It's ten, but well, that's not the first donation he's done. Well, no, uh, yeah, I know. I'm just uh, trying to total it up. Ugh. We can total it up. <laughs> no, it's not zero bits. <laughs> we'll start the boy off strong. <laughs> All right, so we're going to take off. I need to go hit a button over there. Thank you, Boomy. Thanks, Lucifer, for yes. tuning in. Thanks for hanging out, you guys. Really appreciate it. Yep. Yes, and we will uh, see you on Monday. Yes, we're natural will. one. That's like. And this is when we would slate it, but Thomas has got to go behind the screen, so we're just gonna kind of. We'll see you soon, Boomy. Half Later. purple hearts. Thanks, guys. Peace. Peace. I'm looking at. Here, check. Peace out. <laughs>